How you doing? I used to be Jimmy Falcone, a capo in the New York crime family. That's like a vice president of an important company like IBM or Hooters. But now I'm Jimmy McDougal, because I'm in witness protection, living like a schnook in Canada. See, a while back, I got word that the bosses put out a contract on my Uncle Cheech. Poor guy's been hit on the head a few too many times. He was blabbing about all our best stuff. The Hoffa thing, the Kennedy thing, Scientology. I had to do something. So, I got me a sit down with the boss. Cheech made him a buttload of money over the years, so I figured I could appeal to the man's soft side. You are so f He was right. I was f I don't know about your business, but in mine, you can't whack a boss. Oh, Rocco, Fatso, Big Nose, long time. How you punks doing? No oh, crap. The organization went nuts. These were my best friends from grade school coming after me. We used to shake down the homeless together just for kicks. I never thought they'd grow up to be so mean. I mean, I had just gotten those windows reinstalled and these sons of bitches knew it. I didn't know what to do, where to go, who to trust. So I crossed over to the dark side. Play ball with us, Jimmy. Help us lock away your cronies and we'll protect you. We'll put you somewhere they'll never find you. Somewhere they won't even think to look. Somewhere far. And remote. And cold. Very cold. Excuse me. Why is it gotta be cold? Because cold sucks and we don't like you. I see the logic in that. So that's what I did. Ratted out everyone I knew so that my children could grow up with a father that ain't dead. And that's how we came to be living here. In Vagina, Saskatchewan. That's Regina, you freaking moron! Potato, potato! Quit busting my balls, I'm talking here! That's my wife, Cookie. She's a pain in the ass, but I gotta say I love her. You know, cause she's standing right here. Anyway, if any of you think that starting a new life in Vagina... Regina? ...is gonna change the Falcons... Lick Dougals. Forget about it! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Run it by me again. Canada's bigger, but they got 10 states, not 50. They call them provinces, but yeah, 10 provinces. What did they do with the other 40? Why are you asking me? They're freaking retards. Their dollar's a freaking coin! And no one knows what it's worth. Sometimes 80 cents, others 90. They say sometimes their dollar's worth more than a dollar. That don't even make no sense. <laughs> sorry. See that? You cut that chick off and she's sorry. What do you gotta do to get a finger around here? Ah. There's our little angel. You believe these guys staring at me like a piece of meat? But do they hit on me? No, they're such chickens. What's so scary about me? I'm pretty, I'm nice, and if they just told me what they wanted, I'd do it. You'd better be joking, Teresa Maria. And even if you are, I don't want to hear it. God has given you something sacred, and you're going to keep it to yourself until you get a ring. And as far as why they're afraid to talk to you, I have no idea. Look, sweetheart, you can't blame these boys for having no balls. They was born and raised in vagina. Where's your brother? Oh, there he is. Look at him, Jimmy. He's making friends. If I don't pass my English paper, I'm off the curling team. So you're gonna write it for me, McDougal. I'm sorry, Gus, but that's cheating. <laughs> what do you think now, eh? Pretty sure it's still cheating. Afraid I can't let you do that, Jimmy. It'll bring too much attention upon yourself. But having a cop in a red suit up my ass 24-7 is gonna make me blend? Point taken. I'll bring it up at the next briefing. Ah, ah, ah! What did we say? Come on, they're killing him! How's beating him to a pulp gonna blow my cover? It's what any father of but single mother would do. Again, point taken. Wait here. Gentlemen? Is there a problem? Just playing, officer. Teaching them hockey, eh? Hoof it out. Eating lunch. Liars! They're beating me up because I won't do their homework. Oh my god, he's spilling the beans to a cop. He's turned into a rat, a squealer, a stoolie. Oh, what a horrible role model I've been. Thank you for your honesty, young man. As for the rest of you, if this happens again, justice will be swift and severe. Well, not so much severe as compassionate. 
And not swift at all. But our judges are appointed for life, and that can't be good for you. Now, on your way. You see, Jimmy, the matter was handled peacefully with words and idle threats. That's how we do it here in the Great White North. When you grasp that fact, your true assimilation will begin. For Canada! And whatever she stands for! I don't get it. Why don't you fight back these bastards? Hey, language! I mean, why don't you fight back these children born out of wedlock? As Gandhi said, violence never solves anything. Petey, my whole life is based on solving problems with violence. I'm not like you, Pop. I'm not a Neanderthal. Of course not. We're Italian. I mean caveman, Pop. Anthropology? Uh, language. I'm finished. Can I go puke now? Where are your manners, young lady? You will wait till the rest of us are done, and then you can go puke. Evening all. Oh, great shiner kid. Way to go. It's a beaut. I know. I know. I should see the other guy. No, he's fine, actually. I'm ashamed of you. I spit on you. Petey's getting picked on at school. Oh, in that case, kid, what you need to learn is the sweet science. Oh, great science. They just did anthropology. Can I please go puke? No. But if I wait too long, the food will digest. And then puking won't do me any good at all. That's just the risk you'll have to take. And I'm growing very weary of this attitude, Teresa Maria. Fine. God. Guys, sweet science. It's nothing to do with science. I'm talking about boxing. Like I learned you when you was a kid, Jimmy, remember? You was a kind and gentle teacher, Cheech. I still remember the first time I beat a kid into a coma. I made a man out of you, I can make a man out of the kid. We'll take him down to the gym tomorrow and learn him a few moves. Can I come? Nah, they don't let broads in gyms. Go, run, make me a sandwich. Gina, honey, what is this drawing supposed to be? What, are you blind? It's me, sticking Cheech's head in a bear trap. But why, sweetheart? Okay, this all started because Cheech was mouthing off. If he got dead, they'd let us back in New York. Oh, honey, that's so sweet. But your daddy sung like a canary. The mob wants him dead way more than your uncle. We're stuck here in Canada for good, so we just better get used to it. A. A. Jeez, why won't the kid hit back? He's a mutton for punishment. He's just warming up, don't worry. Under all that tree-hugging, love-your-fellow-man atheism lies the son of the Roman Empire, a true falcon. Shh, blend. A son of the Roman Empire, a true McDougal. The f*** are you looking at? I'll gouge out your f***ing eyeballs, I'll f*** in your f***ing skull. Nice blend. Petey, my son! You suck at this. I never wanted to box, Pop. You made me box. But this ain't boxing. Boxing is two guys hitting each other. One guy hitting another is assault. I guess no one will be saving your whale friends now, eh? Who's up for a blubber sandwich? What did you say? I said I like my whales chopped up in a little itty bitty fish sticks. Whales are mammals, you imbecile. <laughs> Are fish. Look at that, Jimmy. Petey made the kids sleep with the fishes. It was fun. I didn't care so much for the part where he was pummeling me, but I really loved the end part where I got to hit him. Seems we found the kid's trigger. What do you mean, trigger? Like how you get when somebody says Pacino's better than De Niro. I just want to kill him. Although, Scent of a Woman was a fine performance. Who said that? I'll kill him. But well, that's how Petey gets when somebody makes fun of that women have the right to vote crap that he's into. I'm sorry, Uncle Cheech. I don't know what came over me. You see what I mean? You're a killer, kid. Don't never apologize. Okay, sorry. I gotta say, he's assimilating the Canada better than any of us. And you, save it for the next fight. What next fight? I'm signing you up for a real amateur fight. With this trigger of yours, they're gonna make a mint! I don't know, violence is wrong. But I did kinda like it. Ah, the sweet science of rationalization. Okay, I'll do it, but on one condition. Half the proceeds gotta go to Doctors Without Borders, and the other half to an internist. Cause I think I'm bleeding internally. Relax, son, they got socialized medicine up here. We can keep it all! <laughs> <laughs> Mommy, can I talk to you? 
I know how Daddy feels about me dating, but there's this boy at school I really, really like, and he likes me. And it's not fair that I can't ever go out with anybody. Don't worry, baby. Of course you can see this boy. We'll just keep it our little secret. So, tell me about him. What's this boy's name? Mr. Henderson. What? He's so cool. He changed my F to a C. He said he couldn't make it an A because it would be too suspicious. So to make it up to me, he gave me this. Teresa Maria, you are not sleeping with your teacher. Of course I'm not. God! I'm just letting him think I will to get better grades and jewelry. What are you, crazy? You will end this relationship immediately. First you say yes, now you say no. You're such a hypocrite, I hate you! Oh, diamonds. All I ever got for fooling around with a teacher was an A. Yeah, me too. But then I went to Catholic school. No stopping him. You know, I'm reading up on this kid Petey's fighting next. He's the top kid in the province. A real killer. Eh, you don't look so tough. Okay, he's tough. But it don't matter. Petey can take him. Well, you'll fix a lot more fights than me. I'll take your word for it. Look at him out there. Getting in shape. Getting some confidence. Becoming a man. Just like his dad. Oh, huh. Is that a sausage in your pocket, or are you just glad to see me? <laughs> nah, it's a sausage. Hey, don't look at me. He who smelt it dealt it. Who do you want me to rat out now? Jimmy, your son has to lose his next fight. What? No chance. The kid's a natural. He can go all the way. That's the problem. Petey is an unknown fighting the top-ranked boy in the province. If he wins, it's news. His picture will be in the paper, your enemies will see it and find you. To make matters worse, purposely achieving notoriety is a drastic violation of your witness protection agreement. We will no longer be authorized or permitted to protect you. Oh, I thought you just wanted a piece of the action. You'll be on your own, Jimmy. Just when you need our help most. Come on, lighten up! It's just a kid's boxing match. Look. I know you Canadians ain't into boxing because you're all peaceable with your clean air and apologizing all the time Stop and... Stop right there, sir. I'll have you know that during World War II, the Canadian Army gained more land mass per individual soldier than any other army. Secondly, our major metropolitan areas are just as polluted, dirty, and disgusting as anything you have south of the border. Don't tell me we got clean air, buddy. And in terms of apologizing, well, perhaps I did overreact, and for that I'm sorry. I'll never get vagina. The boy can't win, Jimmy. Simple as that. So do yourself a favor. For once in your life, follow the rules. For Canada! And whatever she stands for! You are right. Petey's got a forfeit. It's gonna crush him. How do I tell my little boy he's gotta stop doing the only thing he's ever been good at? Get him drunk and a couple of whores. You'll be okay with it. I'm proud of you, Petey. You finally found something you're good at. Pop, I'm a straight-A student. I meant something that matters. But, son, tomorrow's fight. You can't win. I can, Pop! I trained hard! No, Petey, that's not what I mean. It's just that... Okay, look. I don't think you know the real reason we came to Vagina, and it's time you knew the truth. So it's not because you threw your mob boss out of a 19-story window, then ratted out all your lifelong friends to save you behind like a whiny little schoolgirl? Okay, so you do know. But if you win, the feds will take away our protection and the mob will find us. What? Petey, you gotta do the right thing here. You gotta show some balls. Be a quitter. I only got into boxing to make you proud of me. But you don't want to be proud of me. You never did. Petey. I could be a contender, Pop, instead of a geek, which is what I am. No, it's bum. Instead of a bum, which is what... Oh, you mean you. You're not quoting the movie. You're the geek. That's very clever. Stop the car. Where you going? I'm going to the gym to train. I'm going to fight this fight with no help from you and no trigger. I've sharpened my mind and honed my instincts and nothing will stop me. You ready for this? That's my smartest kid. You always gotta outdo me, don't ya? Puking is my thing. You got the nerd thing, and the politically correct thing, and now the boxing thing. All I got is bulimia, and you gotta take that away from me? Now I got nothing! I 
I hate you! Next! What have I done? Why so glum, Jimmy boy? Our problems are solved. They are? That's great! How? I just placed our bet. Petey's going down, and we're the only ones who know about it. <laughs> Jimmy, you said the kid was gonna forfeit. Yeah, but he ain't. Where'd you get the money, anyhow? I used the nest egg. You idiot! That's all the money I saved from the old life. Now he's gonna be on the lamb and broke. Jimmy, we won't be broke. We can't lose. As long as we don't pull the trigger on the kid, he's gonna get pulverized. That's my son, you moron! Your nephew! You want him to get pulverized? Well, it is a lot of money. Okay, okay. Then we gotta change the kid's mind. I tried. He won't listen to reason. Then we lean on him old school, threaten his family. This time I ain't letting you up. Daddy! Daddy! Be right in, princess. I gotta go talk to my little girl. You stay here and finish the job. You mean, drown myself? Why would I? Hey, I do stuff for you all the time. I ask this one little thing. Okay, okay. You don't gotta make a federal case out of it. <laughs> What's the matter, Princess? Got a problem? Well, let's say someone had an uncle and they wanted to whack him. But their mom said they can't, cuz. Sweetie, you still looking to whack your uncle, Cheech? That won't help nothing. No, no, not me. This is for a friend of mine, um, Nancy. And, and she wants to whack her uncle, uh, Nancy. And she asked me for advice, so I said I'd ask my dad, because he's the smartest guy in the whole world when it comes to whacking people. And the handsomest. Sweetie, it's not about looks, but thank you. The important thing is, I get assigned a hit, someone's getting it up the Asti Spamante. <laughs> Jimmy, language. What? It's not like I said You just did. No, I didn't. I said Asti Spamante. You said after that, you mother and asshole. Cookie, you're breaking my Swear in front of all little girl again, I will cut your balls off and stick them up your ass. I don't want to raise no potty mouth. Okay! Gina, daddy, sorry. But it's good you came to me with this thing. Remember, family is the only thing you can count on. Can I at least? No. I hate you! I can't believe we're in this mess. There's got to be a way to fix it. Think! What would Don Gambini do? Are you kidding? He'd whack the kid, whack the Mountie, then have a nice Chianti with his showgirl mistress. Yeah, he was a great man. Funny how you only come to appreciate someone after you kill him. Where the hell's Petey? Gina told me what he's about to do. No way I'm gonna let him fight that kid. He'll get killed. Well, you know, maybe just crippled. Petey, get your dumbass out here. We're going home. Why didn't I come up with that? A2 Brute? Yeah, me friggin' Brute. Get your ass in the car. No, Mother, I'm doing this. I don't need a trigger. I don't need anyone. I'll win on my own, and Mother, I'm very disappointed in your Latin. Petey, wait! You can't go out there. You'll get killed. I know I've been a bitch lately. Go on. That's all. You know what burns me? At the apex of my moment of glory, you're all trying to stop me. So, if none of you care about my needs, why should I care about yours? What a drama queen. Fall down, you friggin' moron! Is that a way to talk to your son? Well, then you say something! Fall down and count to ten, you friggin' moron! No! Wait two more rounds! We make an extra C note if he goes down in the third. You just couldn't let him whack him, could you? No, you had to be the big man and fix it all. Oh, big man, you're such a big man, big man! Okay, I screwed up! He should be dead, and it's my fault that he's not. Can we let it go already? You guys do know that I'm standing right here, right? Baby, I can't take this no more. I can't take this no more, neither. We good? We good. We're in this together. Always have been, always will. Hate crime legislation is for pussies! No! Must protect minorities. Must 
punish those who kill because of skin color or sexual orientation? But wait, murder is already a punishable offense. So hate crime laws aren't punishing the act, but the thought. But the state shouldn't be allowed to decide what are appropriate thoughts. But persecuted minorities need our protection. But we must keep the state out of our heads. I don't know. Could it be that not everything is black and white? That we all must, from time to time, listen to opposing points of view? I don't know. I don't know. Eh, what the heck. Took a dive! He lost! I couldn't be more. Just give me a second, turn away. And justice is served. Sorta. Of, I think. No, it is. It's okay. Good job, me! Gotta hand it to you, Petey. You stood up to everyone, including me. Even scarier than that, your mother. But in the end, you came through and you cheated. For the family. I just realized that, as Khan said, there's a moral shade of gray in which we all must consider how other people- Hey, we don't really care about the thought process. We're proud, so just leave it there and shut up. Petey, I never doubted you. You're my big brother, and I always count on you to do the right thing. Though I bet on you to win, you dumb wop. Every penny I had. <laughs> <laughs> and that's our story. Pretty good, huh? But if you think that's the only story we got, us Falcones living as McDougals in the great municipality of Vagina, well, forget about it. Daddy, that's such a cheesy ending. I'm just trying to get him back for next week. You want to get him back for next week? Here's how you get him back for next week. How you doing? I'm Jimmy McDougal, but I used to be Jimmy Falcone. You probably read about me in the papers. Mafia big shot turned government stool. What you don't know is, despite all the bad stuff I done in my life, the one thing I'm most ashamed of was ratting out my friends. That and the time I had to give my grandmother a bath. He was so gentle. You mind? Mr. Falcone, you told us your crimes. Now, please point to your accomplices. How could I do it? I love these guys. Sure, they was trying to kill me, but that's no reason to ruin a buddy's life. Uh... What was the question again? Enough stalling, Mr. Falcone. Either you testify and you and your family will receive protection, or you can all take your chances on the street. That's blackmail! Arrest that man! Final warning, Mr. Falcone. Fine. To keep my family safe, I'll do it. Here goes. Ready? I'm going to point now. Yes, I am. Can you feel the tension? You can cut it with a knife. Especially you, Tommy. Have it your way, Mr. Falcone. Perhaps your friends will give you a ride home. Okay! Him, 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 him. Now get us to Arizona. Oh, uh, Mr. Falcone, it may be best if you don't announce where we'll be hiding you. Yeah, that was dumb. Can't hide in Arizona now. How about Florida? Oh my god. New Mexico. And that's how we came to be living here in Vagina. Regina. Saskatchewan. But if any of you think a little cold weather's gonna get us down, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the couple with the Gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds The feds say they helped if they could use him as a pawn So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan Forget about it Forget about it Forget about it Oh, forget about it Leave the sauce alone, Jimmy Okay Gina, do your homework I already did it I want to check it Jimmy, leave the sauce alone Okay not due till Thursday. Today is Wednesday. Not due till Friday. Now, you listen here, young lady. Mom, can I have $400? No. When I say do your homework, you do your homework. Not later, not after your show, but now. Jimmy, the sauce! Okay. I already handed it in. That's not fair. Why not? Because I said so. You did not hand it in and leave the sauce alone! Okay. Mother, you catch more flies with honey than vinegar, and it's always best to lead by example. 
Observe. Gina, I already did my homework, and now I'm doing it a second time. Get out of town. Honest, homework can be fun. It can? For real? I hope she wets on you. Daddy, can I have $400? Kate. What the hell are you doing? Are you giving her money? I just said no. The kids always come to me after you say no. Why do I have to be the bad guy? Why can't you ever be the bad guy? Cook, we met when I robbed your father's liquor store. I'm always the bad guy. Oh, and then we got drunk on the stolen Sambuca. It was our first date. <laughs> to this day, I don't know why your father don't like me. All right, Teresa, maybe I answered too quickly. Why do you want the money? Well, I was at the mall the other day, and I saw the cutest little cashmere dog. I would look so adorable with its little fluffy head peeking out of my little designer purse. I'd bend over to give it a little kiss, and everyone would look at me and just die. Honest to God, Cook, it's like Chinese to me. Three times ten? Yes, that is boring. But what if it asked, three of your friends owe you ten dollars each, how much money are you owed in total? 30. 34 with the big. And I better have it by Friday. You're right. This is fun. Jimmy, you know what I love most about Regina? The excitement? Yes, but more than that, in addition to being the capital of Saskatchewan, Regina is also the second largest city in the province after Saskatoon and Canada's 18th largest by population. Its summer agricultural exhibition was originally established in 1884 as the Assiniboia Agricultural Association. I got it. I don't want it, but it's something to do, so I got it. Vagina tourism. You may need a bit more training. Regina tourism? Why, yes. Regina was named in 1882 after Queen Victoria, i.e. Victoria Regina, by her daughter, Princess Louise. No, sir, that's Saskatoon. We're the second largest. No, sir, that's Saskatoon also. No, 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 that's all Saskatoon! Well, if you love Saskatoon so much, why don't you just marry it? Unlike other planned cities in the Canadian West, Regina had no topographical features other than Wiscana Creek. Early planners took advantage of such I tell you, Cheech, I can't take this job no more. All I do is sit around thinking of ways to off myself, and I'm running out of ideas. Whoa, whoa, slow down. Let's talk this through. Have you considered exploding yourself in a microwave like I'd done to Eddie the Gimp? I'm not actually trying to kill myself, Cheech. I'm just a little down. Hey, you seem a little down, Jimmy. But I know what you need. Yes, sir, I know exactly what you need. A good old-fashioned strip joint. Ah, a taste of the old life. Great idea, Cheech. Don't tell Cookie. Wow, I feel good just saying that again. Don't tell Cookie. Okay, okay, I haven't actually been in one, but I've been scoping them out. Don't worry, I got others. I can't find my foot. What's the difference between a duck? I don't know. What is the difference between a duck? I already told you. I don't know. Stop asking me. Oh, there it is. I found my foot. Oh, no, sorry. It's someone else's foot. I don't even want to go inside. I can't believe it. A town called Vagina and not one strip club? What's become of us, Jimmy? It's times like this I'm glad I'm in witness protection because if anyone back home knew I lived in a town with no strip club, I'd be so embarrassed I'd have to go into witness protection. You can say that again. You know, if some dumb schmuck with half a brain opened a strip club in this town, he could make some serious coin. He'd make a freaking fortune. Hey, we could be that dumb schmuck. Cheech, we're gonna open a strip club. Jimmy, you're a genius. I would never have thought of that. A strip club. It's perfect for us. It's our bed and butter. I believe the expression is bed and breakfast. So it's agreed. Tomorrow we dig out the nest day, get our money from the old life, find a place, and start renovating. This is a great idea. It's a license to print money. Every man in town will be there. Oh my God, we got a problem. Is it peeing, Jimmy? 
I got such a problem, peeing. No, the Fed. Our goody two-shoes Mountie, our protector. He'll never let us do this. Then we don't tell him. And just to be safe, we don't tell no one. This club will be our little secret. Kay, you're definitely not in charge of marketing. I got here as fast as I could, Jimmy. What's the problem? Because two problem, me problem. Okay, before you say no, hear me out. Me and Cheech want to open a strip club. The town don't have one, so we're providing a public service. And if it don't work, nobody gets hurt but us. There's no law against it, Jimmy. I think it's a splendid idea. I will be there opening night to support you. Horny bastard. I beg your pardon? That's what we're calling it. The horny bastard. So we can do this? As long as you follow the provincial guidelines. Bare breasts and bums permitted, but no full frontal or related mons pubis if alcohol is served. Ladies may touch the man's face, arms, chest, and inner thigh, but must remain a minimum five centimeters from his genitalic region. Men may not touch, fondle, grope, or lick, and must be kept at least three centimeters from her breasts. This to be measured from the tip of the nipple, and not the areola or breast major. There goes my boner. I'm proud of you, Jimmy. This is your first step towards becoming a semi-respected member of the community, and I trust you'll do well at it. For Canada and her public education system ranked 11th in the world! Gina, eat your asparagus. I did. No, you didn't. I'm not hungry. You go, girl. Don't eat if you don't wanna. That's how they make you fat. Stick to your guns and you can grow up to be hot and anorexic like me. I thought you were bulimic. Only when I'm hungry. Thank you, Teresa. Gina, eat it. I don't want to get fat. Can I change the subject to me? I've put a lot of thought into the cashmere dog, and I've come up with the perfect argument for why you need to give me the money to buy it. All right, what's your argument? I look really, really, really cute. Then get a job. When your father and I were teenagers, we worked for things we wanted. I was sweeping up at the beauty parlor, and your dad was already breaking legs for Joey the Shark. But it's a different world now. We have internet and texting and cell phones and automobiles. The answer is no. You just don't want me to look good because you don't, and I hate you! So what else is new? Gina, eat your asparagus! Petey is needing his. Aha. Uh -huh. Petey, eat your asparagus. Mother, I'm allergic, remember? No, you're not. And don't you get it? It's like the homework thing. Gina looks up to you and she'll do what you do. Okay. Gina, asparagus is good for you. I'm allergic. No, I'm allergic. No one's allergic. Petey, eat it. Fine. Hey, this is pretty good. <coughs> oh yeah, you are allergic. So we're looking for a manager, someone to run a joint because we don't want to do any actual work. We just want to be the owners, make all the money, boss people around, and pay as little as we can. We're like Walmart, but with naked ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Next! Because I adore ladies, especially naked ones, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and everyone knows only a straight man would manage a place like this, which I am. <laughs> so straight it's scary. First off, no nudity. I'll work 24 hours a day, I don't care. Come on, Jimmy, I've run joints like this before. Yeah, right into the ground. Oh, Cheech, you're talking to my wife here. I'm sorry, Cook, but we checked your references. If I was the manager of this club, I'd make sure that the girls are beautiful, but also have a certain uh, schwa, schwa, schwa. Schwa, 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 schwa. And if we could find just one with a schwa, 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 schwa. I like him. Me too. Okay, Mac, you're hired. Who'd have thought we'd wind up with the Puerto Rican guy? No! It's just a haircut. They're gonna put a sharp blade next to my head. Forget it! You look adorable. No! What's going on? Gina needs a haircut, but she won't... No. I told you you'd look adorable. You know, a ride home would have been nice. Heck of a job, Monsieur Schwa Schwa. The joint looks great, and the girls you hired are gorgeous. 
Well, it is a pleasure for moi aussi, Monsieur McAdoo de Gueule, parce que I love very much to chouin, 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 chouin. Who doesn't? Jim, we got a problem. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, that is a little too close. Remember the three centimeter rule? It's more than three centimeters. I highly doubt that. 3.8, I stand corrected. All right, bring it in a little. Gentle circles, no pinching. I won't tell you again. And you, inner thigh, inner, what's so hard about that? What's the big deal? The girls won't break the rules, not with a fed. No, no, it ain't that. All our best girls just want to dance for him. And our customers are starting to complain. I want to come home with you tonight, Special Agent. No, take me. No, me. I could have this place shut down for just asking me that dancer number three, but I'll let it slide this time if you all promise to never make such a request to a customer again. We promise. Of course, if you happen to follow me home of your own accord and no money changes hands, well, then it's all just good, clean fun. You know what? I'm not going to worry about it tonight. Tonight, we celebrate. To the horny bastard. The horny bastard! The horny bastard! Thank you, Delilah! And now, all the way from Paris, Ontario, put your hands together for the beautiful Paris, Ontario! Ah, this one is a real find. Teresa! Daddy? Oh my god! Oh, that is hot. Teresa! I can't believe you come to places like this. You're sick. What are you talking about? Me and Cheech own the joint. So I know the owner. That's a very good connection for me. OK, but you'll have to leave the main room when I'm on stage. Are you crazy? I'm not letting you work here. You mean you're firing me? You are my daughter. And what kind of man fires his own daughter? I hate you. F <laughs> Oh, Gina, I made you a dentist appointment for next Thursday. I'm not going. Oh, sweetie, it's just a routine checkup. Your brother needs a root canal. No, I don't. Shh. All right. If Petey goes, I'll go. Oh, come on. Where's Teresa? In her room. What's wrong? Nothing. Bad day on the job. Very bad day on the job. Stupendous day on the job. You, schwa, 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 schwa. You, schwa, schwa, schwa. You, schwa. Monsieur Le Mondi, we appreciate your schwa, schwa, schwa. Mais schwa, 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 schwa. Schwa, 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 schwa. Ah, your French is very good. Schwa, schwa. Baby, can't we talk this out? Oh, it's not fair, Daddy. All I wanted was $400, but Mom said I had to get a job. She didn't say be a stripper. She didn't say not to be a stripper. And I have wanted to do this ever since I thought of it the other day. Boys like me anyway. I bet they'd like me even more naked. Oh, princess. You don't want boys to like you for that. You're a smart, capable young woman with a big heart and a good mind. One day you'll find a boy who loves you for that. And that's all you'll ever need. Aw, oh, Daddy. That is so gay. Baby, I don't want us to fight. Then don't thwart my dreams. I love to dance. I live to dance. And I'll never forgive you because I hate you. <sighs> All right. How about I just give you the $400? I love you. But I don't want your mother knowing I'm going behind her back. Don't worry. I don't tell you or Mommy anything when I go behind your backs. Good. Wait. OK, good. Would you keep it down? You're scaring your sister. Daddy, Uncle Cheech, I'd like you to meet the newest member of our family, Paris Ontario. I gave him my stripper name. Does it bite? Cheech, it's cashmere. So, I don't know. Do cashmere's bite? I love it so much, Daddy. Thank you. Just want to make you happy, Princess. I hoped you'd say that, because when I got her, I saw the cutest diamond-studded collar. So, can I have $500 more to stay happy? No. Out of the question. That's not fair! Then let me earn it at the club! We've been through this. All the other cashmere!
cashmere dogs have diamond collars. Why do you have to make Paris feel less than? I hate you! Okay, fine. Here. I love you! Did you just buy your daughter's love? Hey, it was for sale, and I wanted it. And not a single cavity. And you sat in the chair so bravely. I hate your family. Hey, how come there's two Genas? Mom, Mom, look what I got. Isn't she the cutest thing you ever saw? Where'd you get the money for this? Oh, um, I got a job. Doing what? Uh, working for Daddy. She's just keeping the books. She don't even know what kind of club it is. I do all the adding and the takeaways. Oh, I am so proud of you. You wanted something and you went out and got it. Thanks, Mom. You want to meet Paris, Ontario? Aw, so this is what all the fuss was about. I can see why. It's adorable. Keep it to yourself, Cook. But I've been trying to play with that dog, and I believe it to be dead. I've been saving up for a diamond-studded collar for her. Yes, absolutely yes. And you know what would go perfectly with a diamond-studded collar? A gold mesh leash. OMG! You are so right, Mommy. And fortunately for me, today's payday. Isn't it, Daddy? Why, yes, sweetie. Today is payday. I love you! Oh, things are really turning around. You got a business going that's right up your alley? Teresa's becoming responsible. Gina's behaving. Being forced to come to Regina may have been the best thing for this family. Gina, time to get ready for ballet class. Put on your tutu. Ah! <laughs> Hey, Jimmy boy, why so glum? This thing with Teresa, it's emotional blackmail and I resent it. And also, respect it. Oh yeah, she's playing you like a tuba. I know the saying is violin, but you're a big man. I can't keep paying her, but I can't stand her hating me. She'd love me forever if I let her work in a club, but I can't do that neither. And now with Cookie being all proud of her? Ah, <sighs> how'd I get into this mess? All I wanted to do was sell bare boobies to horny Canadians. You know what your problem is, Jimmy? You're thinking like a McDougal. Start thinking like a Falcon again. Cheech, that's brilliant. It is? But I guess you keep shooting off your mouth. Eventually, something good comes out. Baby, I've been thinking. Just giving you money for doing nothing ain't good for your character, so I'm gonna let you strip for your money. I'm gonna make you so proud. I love you. I love you too, princess. God bless insurance. Now this is the Falcon way. I think we are gonna make more money from this than if we had kept the joint going. Uh-oh. Don't worry, Jimmy. I got this one. Don't think I don't know what you boys are doing. You clearly bought this place only to burn it to the ground for the insurance money. Well, I will not let you get away with it. Oh, yeah? Well, the joke's on you. I forgot to buy insurance. You idiot! <laughs> and justice is served. How you doing? I used to be Jimmy Falcone, a capo in a Gambini crime family. Now, I'm Jimmy McDougal, living in witness protection like a schnook. But I gotta admit, sometimes I can't help but wonder if it ain't my own damn fault. You see, a while back I needed to ask the Don for a favor. Oh, wanna no taste, sweet fishy? Don Gambini, I come to you on my knees to ask you to call off the hit on my uncle Cheech. Cheech, he talks a lot, but he don't mean no- No! By the way, not easy keeping the Don in one piece. He was a great man, a brilliant criminal mind, but kind of a spaz. As I was saying, Cheech don't mean no harm. He's just a little light in a cranial region. Hey, Jimmy, look at that storm brewing. Is that lightning? Son of a bitch, it is lightning!
Jimmy, that better be a gun in your pocket. I beg your forgiveness, Don Gambini. But as I was saying, Godfather, my Uncle Cheech is a good man. Always been a good earner for you, and if you could only show him some mercy. Jimmy, you come to me on a good day. I received news today that my beautiful daughter Tina is to wed. On this day, I am a happy man, filled with much love. Does this mean you'll give my Uncle Cheech another chance? Nah, that ship has sailed. But what it means is that you may bring your family to the wedding. Especially that daughter of yours, that Teresa. What a piece of ass! So like I said, sometimes I can't help but wonder if it all ain't my own damn fault. Cause that's why we wound up in witness protection here in Vagina- Rejoiner? Saskatchewan. But if you think I'm gonna beat myself up over it, forget about it! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the couple with the Gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. I'm just 15. Why do I have to learn to drive now? Because driving is what men do. My father taught me how to drive a getaway car. His father taught him how to drive a getaway car, and his father was run over by a getaway car. Is this supposed to convince me? Petey, there's nothing better in the world than driving. Well, drinking. Drinking and driving. But not together. You don't drink and drive, you stupids! You know, I wasn't gonna bring this up, but since you're into this whole bonding thing, my school's having a father-son recycle drive this Friday. Will you come with me? Listen, Petey, I'm pretty sure I have something on Friday. I just haven't made up what it is yet. Now come on! Make like we're being chased by the cops! All right, all right, give me the keys. <laughs> keys. <laughs> Okay, what we'll do now is called fleeing the scene of a crime. Drive! 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 The nuclear-powered engine. Not my best idea. What do we do? This is a very delicate situation, son. Just follow my lead. Ow! Ow! My neck! My neck! Oh my god, Pop. That's Richard Wheaton, one of the richest men in the world. Really? In that case... My neck, my back, my knee! You're Richard Wheat, then. Yes, I'm afraid I am. Computer genius, inventor, world-renowned wildlife photographer? I'm also a licensed manicurist. Few people know that. I'm Petey McDougal. This is such an honor. I saw you compete at the Winter X Games. You were awesome. I guess. If we live in a world where silver medals are considered awesome... Where I come from, it's still third place. Uh... This is Jimmy, my parent and or guardian. Easy. I just been in a terrible wreck. You hit me. Okay, we'll call it even. Actually, I should thank you. I was about to go into production with that nuclear engine. Well, nice meeting you. Pop, the least you could do is give the man a ride. No, I can do less. I live just up the hill. Oh, all right, come on. This guy just takes and takes. Your cuticles look very healthy, Jimmy. You can just say the barn door is open, but thanks. Okay, over just a smidge. Little more. I want his thingy pointing to the front door. It's classy, but also informational. Cookie, I need a word. Well, if it ain't my special agent McCool. <laughs> Look how handsome you look in your shiny red uniform all Pressed and clean and... Oh, have you been working out? Where do you get guns like these? <laughs> My gun was issued at headquarters. I know that's not what you meant, but I felt it prudent to change the subject. And I'm here to tell you that you cannot keep this statue on your lawn. Why not? This is some fancy shit. For one, a Canadian family would never possess such a thing, and its medium-sized genitalia is a neighborhood distraction. Medium? Hello? Oi, oh Boy, can you imagine having a jablong like that? And no freaking arms to get at it? I mean, come on, McCool, guy to guy. 
If you were him, and you couldn't give it a little tug now and then, you'd want to kill yourself. But you couldn't, because you got no arms. I'm leaving now, Uncle Cheech, and I shall trust you can understand why I won't shake your hand. Resident, resident, Bill, resident... Oh, yay! Victoria's Secret catalog! Cookie, you cannot throw away your neighbor's mail. That is an indictable offense. Cheese and whiskers, this is someone's baby bonus check. What kind of check now? A baby bonus check, Gina. It's Canada's gift to the parents of all children. Go on, Chief. It was instituted after World War II to reduce financial stress on soldiers' families. Australia has the same baby bonus policy, but theirs is racist to ensure white control of the country, and so not really the same at all. And who's eligible for this baby bonus? All parents of children under seven. My mother got the baby bonus for me, and she always said, I don't need money for this child. I would pay to have a child this good. And we'd laugh, and she would hold me. And then we'd make pancakes and cry because Daddy loved box wine and pornography. But I say too much. For Canada! And the fact that we are not Australia! Most of the art is my own, of course. I paint what I feel and feel what I paint. So, you feel like a clown riding a blue wolf? Sometimes, Jimmy, sometimes. I see you enjoy tennis. No, those are snowshoes, one of my many passions. I once spent an entire winter lost in the forests of Manitoba, with nothing but those snowshoes and a People magazine. The magazine meant nothing, of course, but those shoes, those shoes saved my life. Science was your first love, though, right, Mr. Wheaton? Same as me? Yes, Petey, same as you. Well, we should get going, Petey. We got that thing. What thing? You know, the thing, the old thingy thing thing. What are you talking about? I think if I'm reading your father correctly, he wants to leave because he is very, very bored. Yes, thank you. That thing. Come on, Pop, can't we just stay a little longer? I want to see the science lab. You do have a science lab, right? <laughs> Why, they'd take away my nerd card if I didn't. You have a nerd card? Oh, come on, Petey. I gotta get back. Maybe Mr. Wheaton could give me a ride home. Is that all right with you, Mr. Wheaton? Sure, if it's okay with your father. Let me think about this. Get out of my bedroom. There's something you don't say very often. Have you ever thought about being a mother? I've had some scares. Why? How would you like to rip off the government and get something for nothing? Sounds like something I might be interested in. It's called the baby bonus. God, I'm not gonna have a baby. Have you seen what having a baby does to a female body? I mean, I love mom, but look at her. You don't have to have a baby. All you have to do is pretend to be my mother and we get a government check every two weeks. What do you mean pretend? Like, acting? Yeah. Like a movie star. I could do that. But I won't do nudity unless it's intrinsic to the character and tastefully done. So I'm thinking a 60-40 split. I get 65 because I came up with it. So uh, you good with 30? How'd it go with Petey's driving? The kid's hopeless. I gotta ask you something, Cook. Be honest. Is he mine? Jimmy, sometimes I'm not even sure he's mine. So where is he? I left him out at some jillionaire's house in the country. Petey ran him off the road, so we drove him to his mansion, and it had all kinds of stuff the kid liked. Are you out of your mind? You left a teenage boy with some strange man you know nothing about who has toys and gadgets to lure young boys to his compound? Well, when you put it like that, it sounds bad. Mom, Dad, I can drive! It's so easy! Watch! I hope you don't mind that I gave him a quick lesson. How the hell did you learn so fast? Well, why didn't you just tell me that the spark plug ignites the air-fuel mixture so that combustion can occur, and that the intake and exhaust valves open at just the right moment for the engine to fire? <laughs> Man, what else didn't you tell me? Uh, always check your mirrors? Let's drive some more, okay? Of course, son, I'd love to. Let me just get my... He's a better father than I am. 
He's also taller and richer than you are. I swear to God that just slipped. Great breakfast, Cookie. Sure is. They say breakfast is the most important meal in the morning. Mr. Wheaton says a man could survive on a grain of sand for two weeks if he had to. Yeah, if he doesn't mind love handles. Anyway, Ma, we gotta run. I'm taking Gina to the mall. Aw, that fills my heart. Two sisters spending the day together shopping. Since we moved here, I never get to see my sainted sister. That painted hoe. And I miss her so. Here she goes. Time for the waterworks. Boo-hoo-hoo. You will not disrespect your grandmother that way. You're not my mother. You're my sister. Don't talk back to me, young lady. You know, Mr. Wheaton and his sister have a variety show in England. Jeez, Petey, can we talk about something else for a change? How's about football? Sure. Did you know Mr. Wheaton's great-grandfather invented football? Every time someone throws a pass, his family gets six dollars. You're killing me, Petey. On and on about this guy. It's not like the man can fly. Just invented it. It runs on beetle dung. I've got one for you, Petey. That's the gayest thing I ever seen in my life. And I watch Glee. OMG. It says here we could go to prison for committing fraud. That's fraud. And only if you get caught. I can't go to prison, Gina. Those guys would go crazy for me. It would be a woman's prison. I'm nuts. Even worse, I'd have to chop off my hair and buy a flannel. Take it easy. No one's going to jail because you are a great actress. Right, right, right. I forgot. Okay, let me get into character. Teresa McDougal. Here we go. Say it. Oh, for the love of God. Action. I am Teresa McDougal. This is my daughter, Gina. We are residents of Canada and have never collected the baby bonus because... I was working in the Peace Corporation, helping to feed the indigo people of Del Taco. I'm deaf as a stone, dear. I just assigned the numbers. Over there. Now you know why it says do not write on this part of the form. Mama! <laughs> Jimmy, are you okay? It looks like there was a hit in here. There wasn't, was there? Nah, come on, Cook. What do you think I am, an animal? I only whack people in the garage. So what's going on? You only make sauce when you're upset. Ah, oh, Cookie, I'm like an open book to you. It's like you open a book and go, geez, there's Jimmy in a book. What is it, big man? Okay, it's just that Petey's hanging out with his new fancy friend and I feel like I've been replaced. You ain't been replaced, you big dope. Petey looks up to you. If you want your boy back, you take him back. Good news, Pop. I invited Mr. Wheaton to the father-son recycle drive. He said yes, so you're off the hook. Aren't you happy? No, I am not happy, Petey. You are my only son, and I will not allow you to go without me. But I already invited him. Then uninvite him. I can't. Then I will. It's time for me to stand up like a man. I will be your escort to the father-son dance. It's not a dance! Then why did I buy this corsage? <gasps> you comfortable? Can I get you anything? Hmm. There seems to be some confusion in your file. What's your name, sweetheart? Teresa McDougal. Where were you born? Don't mess with us, baby cakes. Your so-called daughter's being questioned in the other room, and she's singing like a canary. So I'll ask you one last time. Where were you born? Canada. All right, good enough. Let's go get your check. So you know for next time, you can do this online. Look, you seem like a nice guy, but Petey is my son, which makes me his father which means I'm the one who should take him to the father-son whatchamacallit. Look, I don't want to step on anyone's toes, but recycling is one of my pet projects. I invented the blue bin. Few people know that. Why don't we both take him? No son of mine is showing up with two daddies at something as important as a whatchamacallit. Well, I already told him yes. I can't say no now. You can if I tell you to. 
You will if I tell you to, and I'm telling you to. No, I don't think so, Jimmy. I don't think you know who you're dealing with. Since you brought it up, you do look kind of familiar. Okay. I didn't want to have to do this. Oh my god! You're Jimmy Falcone! All right, you could take the kid. I am not Jimmy Falcone. I don't even know who that is. Of course you are. Come here, I want to show you something. I've always been a mafia nut. I totally followed your trial. So I'm dying to know, when you whacked Sammy the Sparrow, did you really use a lead pipe? No, it was an axe handle. And I am not Jimmy Falcone. And was your Uncle Cheech really the wheel man on the Altamonte Foods heist? Nah, it was Nicky the Nail. It was supposed to be Cheech, but he was holed up in a hotel in Jersey with a school teacher he met. Funny story, really. I mean, I am not Jimmy Falcone! I can't believe I didn't recognize you right away. All right, fine, you got me. What do you want? I want us to be friends, Jimmy. Yeah, for f sake. What do you think would happen if we was made, Cheech? I thought we was made. No, I know we're made men. I mean, what if we was made by somebody here in vagina? I don't care who done it, Jimmy. Just so long as we was made. <laughs> I hope this is good, Jimmy. I was polishing my knob. Look how shiny it is. Now, what seems to be the problem? Listen, I'm just wondering, hypochondriacally speaking, what would happen if we was made? What are you talking about? You see what I mean? It's hard to follow. I'm just wondering what you feds would do if somebody recognized us. Would you, I don't know, waste him so that the person that was made wouldn't have to do it himself? No, nothing would happen to the person who recognized you, but we would immediately move you and your family north. I thought this was north. There's a more north? So north you'll sh your pants just for the heat. But why do you ask? Have you been spotted? No, not at all. Uh, the thing is, there's this father-son dance coming up at the high school, and I'm wondering if you wanted to take Petey. Why, Jimmy? So you can stay home and watch porn and drink cheap wine? Well, I won't be part of it. But Canada, where poop is your friend and also your blanket. We did it! We totally burned Johnny Canuck! Oh, I, I feel kind of bad now that I know his name. This is gonna buy a lot of candy. All right, but only one piece a night and you must brush immediately after. Will you knock it off? What? I'm still in character. We're home now. You're not my mother. You never had a baby. I knew this day would come. Gina, it's natural to be curious about where babies come from. Who said I'm curious? When a man and a woman love each other, they have a lot of intercourse. A lot. Hey, I am not hearing where babies come from from you. I don't want to get too technical because I'm not a doctor. But when a man's peepa gets hard... Goodbye! You get back here, young lady. I am still pretending to be your mother. And if that's not enough, may I remind you, it's my name on the check. Nothing is worth this. You can have it all. And scene. Petey, I thought it over, and you can go to the father-son whatchamacallit with wheat then. Seriously, Pop? Oh man, you're the best! I do what I can, son. Wait then, it's me, Jimmy. I think you're right about us being friends. What do you say we go snowshoeing? Out in a tundra, where no one can see us or hear us for miles. So after the Campanelli boys got through with them, we had to start calling them Johnny Two Legs. <laughs> Amazing, tell me another one. All right, here's one. A few years back, we was robbing a safe of Frankie, three to the right, eight to the left, seven to the right. Nobody could figure out the combination. So we blew it up! Wow, this is awesome. <laughs> you know, I'm starting to wonder if I know too much. I know your name, the crimes you've committed, where you're in hiding. If this were a movie, you'd have to whack me! Yeah, if this was a movie. Oh, crap. Oh, please, no! But you gotta understand, I so don't want to do this. I never had me a fan before. Please, Jimmy. I won't tell anyone, I promise. I don't want to die. I have a family. Well, I don't, but I'm cloning one in the lab. 
Don't do it, Pop. He's my only friend in Canada. He's my only friend anywhere. You gotta do it, Jimmy. He made you. And by that, I mean he recognized you. Want me to do it, Pop? Get your ass home and clean this kitchen, you son of a bitch. Daddy! Please, Pop, let him go. I'll never ask you for anything again. Just do this for me, your firstborn male, please. Sincerely yours, Petey. All right, Wheaton. You caught yourself a break. Let's head back. Thank you, thank you. And I meant it when I said I'll never tell anyone. Jimmy, I have homes all over the world. Paris, Beijing, Rome. I hang out with world leaders and movie stars. I don't want them to know I live in Regina. You know, my family invented ice fishing. How you doing? I'm Jimmy McDougal, but I used to be Jimmy Falcone, a respected New York businessman in the gangster and gangster-related industries. Then I whacked my boss and ratted out everyone I knew to save my uncle's life. Now, ratting out the mob is not as glamorous as you think. Before the trial, they stick you in a federal safe house on an army base so no one can get to you. But that doesn't mean they don't try. Jimmy, you killed the dawn. A simple apology ain't gonna cut it. Hey! I offered to do the eulogy. I wasn't the one who said that's in bad taste. It was the family consigliere. His coming to see me could only mean danger, but it was still nice to have a visitor. You know, Jimmy, back in the Roman Empire, and in Godfather too, when somebody messed up the way you just did, they were given a way to provide for their wife and kids for the rest of their lives. All he had to do was kill themselves before the trial. Over my dead body, you son of a bitch! Said with all respect, you a man your position. Look, Jimmy, I've always liked you. In fact, I went to the mat for you to help your family. Help me help you. Wow, when does the guy who doesn't like me get here? Listen, it'll be very embarrassing for me to go back and say you won't honor this request. If you don't do this, I will dedicate my life to hunting you down. You and your family will never know a moment's peace the rest of your days. How about the nights? Can we get the nights off? It was the hardest decision I ever had to make. All right, I'll do it. Pass it over. Turns out, it was an easier decision than I thought. So, here I am with my wife and kids alive and well in vagina... Regina. ...Saskatchewan. But if you don't think that's pretty much the same as being dead, forget about it! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Jimmy Falcone has done it. He has won the Masters. He wears the green jacket. He wishes it was a blue jacket to offset his eyes, but whatever. Let's hear from the champion. I knew that if there was a day without snow, that I could win this. I did it for my wife, Cookie. Cookie! Cookie! Breakfast is ready. What's your problem? The sun's shining, temperatures above zero? You know that ain't gonna last. I'm off to the food court at the mall to hang out, but not eat. You are not going out dressed like that, young lady. There's a reason they call you privates privates. Fine. God. I'll be at the science center. They have a new exhibit on nanotubes. Petey, what did I tell you about hanging around those kinds of places? Don't ask, don't tell. I'll be home in time for dinner. I'm not making dinner, and don't be late. You okay, Cook? Like you care. All right, Jimmy. I dusted off the clubs. I've been working on my swing. Get a load of this. Who's handicapped now, you son of a bitch? Save it for the course, Cheech. Tea time's in 20, and no way I'm gonna be late. Oh, sure, go have your fun. I'll just stay here and do what I did yesterday, and the day before, and the day before that. Nothing. All right, well, try to find some time for yourself. Don't you get it? 
I'm bored out of my mind. I can't talk to my friends, my sister. There's no good shopping. I'm going crazy here. Well, you gotta do something. Find a hobby, like I got golf, or get a job. One of those will shut you up. But what am I supposed to do? I ain't worked since we got married. What about back when we was kids that summer in Atlantic City? You had a job then, and you were very respected in the community. You mean a fortune teller's assistant? Yeah, working for Madame Scamia. Oh, I love that job. That cute little kiosk on the boardwalk, all those scarves you got to wear, talking European, not having to shave. <laughs> Those were good times. So why don't we open your own shop here in Vagina? Oh, I couldn't. I don't have the gift. Madame Scamia, she had the gift. She could see things years into the future. She was a special, special lady with a God-given talent. We could fake it. I could do that. Then it's settled. We'll dip into the nest egg, find you a nice place, and get you all set up. But first, I ain't missing this gorgeous weather. Come on, Cheech, let's hit the links. You know what, baby? Your needs come first. Okay, Teresa, you're at reception. You distract the clients. Gina, you pick their pockets and get their info. Cheech is on sound. Jimmy, your lights and smoke machine. All right, let's do a practice run. Teresa, you be the customer. Hello, I'm the customer. I would like to know my fortune. Madam Cookie will tell you what she sees. Please sit. Testing, testing. I am the ghost of the dead person that you know. Not yet, Cheech. Just the mood music to start. And don't say testing. <coughs> Down a notch on the smoke machine, Jimmy. Her name is Teresa McDougal. Your name is Teresa McDougal. She lives at 1234 Jim Carrey Lane. You live at 1234 Jim Carrey Lane. She is 25 years of age. You're 25, what? 25? <gasps> Gina, you weren't supposed to pick my fake ID. Mom's gonna kill me now. No, I'm not. I can appreciate a good fake ID. I went to my first bar when I was seven. Okay, everyone, clients will be coming soon. Teresa, show a little more cleavage. Jimmy, thank you so much for this. I'm so happy. I feel like I was born to do this. Hey, my money's gone. Gina, you stole my money. Ma told me to. No, sweetie, you misunderstood. Get their information, not their money. We're running a legitimate scam here. Can you believe it? I thought she was totally going to read me out about my fake ID. Yeah, and I thought she was going to make me give you back your money. I know, right? Wait. Hey! Oh, girls, where are my magical assistants? Just look at her, Cheech. I ain't seen Cookie this happy since that summer she was on Prozac. I know what you're up to, gentlemen, and I shan't allow it. The good citizens of Saskatchewan deserve better than to be taken in by your flim-flam confidence games. Hey, this is a legitimate business. Why, you don't believe in the supernatural? You want to know what I believe, Jimmy? I'll tell you what I believe. I believe in a Canada true north, strong and free. Universal health care. The metric system. The letter Z. That Saturday night was made for hockey. I believe Keanu Reeves is highly underrated. I believe if I were a woman and I didn't have the ability to wrap my legs around my neck, I would never take my boyfriend to see Cirque du Soleil. I believe in football with three downs, two fours of beer and maple syrup. And I believe that Rush is the single greatest band of all time. Uh, so we can stay open? I believe we're about to find out. You can try to distract me all you want, Teresa, but until you reach legal age, I see only your face. Nice eyes. Bad me, bad. You'd better not be trying to pick my pocket, young Gina. When I grow up, I want to be a Mountie just like you. You and 30 million other Canadians. Oh, Special Agent McCool, my very first customer. You look so dapper today. Oh, that doesn't make you psychic, Cookie. It only makes you observant. No, you look good enough to eat. I'd love to put you on a cracker. Or a cookie. Oh! <laughs> Take it easy, you big idiot. I'm just buttering up the customer. Let's cut to the chase, Cookie. Stop that. We'll have none of that cheesy light and sound show here, thank you. All 
All right, Madam Cookie. It's just you and me now. Dazzle me. I see... I see... Red? Your favorite color is red? I, I, I see leaves, uh, oak leaves, green leaves, a maple leaf. You're very patriotic. Just as I thought. You're a fake, a phony, a fraud. You'll leave me no choice but to shut you down. No, 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 no. I can do this. Uh, you're having lunch. The menu is in a foreign language you don't understand. Uh, the milk in your tea is sour. A uh, baby cries. A uh, waiter drops a tray. There's a mouse tail in your soup. Uh, a homely woman in a blue dress asks you for change. That's so general, it can apply to anyone. Hmm, not the standard Mandarin dialect that I studied in college. The milk for your tea is sour. Oh, I'm sure it's just a coincidence. Baby cries. The waiter drops a tray. A mouse tail in my soup! Impossible! You got change for a five? I can't wait to tell Cookie how he snowed that fed! Yeah, how stupid did he look? If only she could have been there. She loves a good short con more than anyone. Jimmy, you won't believe it! McCool told me all my predictions came true! I have the gift! I actually have the gift! Just like Madame Scamia. She always said I would, but I never thought I did. But I do! I have the gift! What, you think you have the gift? Word's already spreading. I'm booked solid for a week. This is terrible. What are you talking about? She has the gift. No, she doesn't. She just thinks she does because of what we did. Now we gotta keep making her predictions come true. Jeez, Jimmy, that's gonna take up a lot of time. I know, but look how happy she is. Shh! I'm getting something. Pluto will be a planet again. Okay, Jimmy. Let's get to work. So, if we all just keep making her think she has the gift, everything will be beautiful. But that's deceitful. A white lie is still a lie. Don't you get it? When your mother's happy, we all get to be happy. So we gotta do whatever it takes to keep her this way. No kidding. I swore this morning and she didn't say a f thing. Hey, Cook. Tell us about work. What kind of predictions did you make, and to whom, specifically? Oh, I can't say. Psychic client confidentiality and all that. Oh, what the hell. I told Mrs. Campbell she'd find $10 inside a new sofa. I told Mr. Peterson he'd have a scooter accident. I told Mr. Chan his son will set a new record at his hockey game. I told old lady Johnson she'll get pregnant. I got this one, Jimmy. Nothing like a nice, relaxing game of golf after a long day of bullshitting your wife. Hey, how'd you get all this time off work anyway? I found a sub. Okay, legs shoulder width apart, slight bend at the knees. You know, Cheech, it's funny. They took away my identity, they took away my livelihood, they took away everything that made me me. But the one thing they couldn't take was this game and my love for it. Mother f c sucking! You're right, Jimmy. This is relaxing. You'll win a raffle, you'll be attacked by a goose, you'll break your leg in a freak fondue accident, you never ride a tandem bicycle. Come on, people, give me a challenge here! She was really good. Wanna come over for some fondue? Sure, we'll take my bike. It's built for two. I appreciate your seeing me on such short notice, Madam Cookie. I was hoping you could help me solve a case. I never thought I'd say these words, but I can't do it. Really? Because I picture you doing it all the time. <laughs> it seems there's been a rash of convenience store robberies, and I have yet to be able to gain a description of a suspect. The only lead I have is this handkerchief. Give me a hand. Don't you need to hold the handkerchief? Shh, 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 shh. We don't have time for this. Ever. But anything you could tell me would be greatly appreciated. Of course. Let's begin. Yes, yes. I see someone. A, a man. A middle-aged man. White, slight build, dark eyes, dark short hair, and a mustache. Madam Cookie, 
has spoken. Thank you, Madam Cookie. You've been a great help. All right, boys. We're looking for Hitler. For Canada! And Mounty shouting in unison! No! Oh. 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 Okay, now you do me. Get a load of this! Zero chance of snow! Zero! From the top of 5,000, no less! And I read it on the internet, so you know it's true! Let's go! Uh, I don't know, Jimmy. I'm looking at my itinerary. I got Wheel of Fortune at 10, Andy of Mayberry at 10.30, and scratching my nuts at 11. No, we gotta go now. It could snow any second. But the Doppler said it won't. I can't take the chance. If I don't get some golfing soon, I'm gonna go crazy. All I do anymore is run around town making my wife think she's a psychic. I need this. Good news, Jimmy. I scratched my nuts while you were choking me. I'm good to go. Hold it. Nobody move. I had a dream. Not like Petey's, I hope. Oh, English, oh, math, oh, science, oh, oh, oh! In the dream, we were at a carnival, and the Grim Reaper shot at us seven times. It means seven attempts will be made on one of our lives. If anyone leaves this house today, they'll be in mortal danger. Come on, Cook, dreams don't mean nothing. I had a dream once that the toilet turned into a dragon. I still sit on a john every morning. Ma, I can't stay home all day. Me either. I got a thing and a thing. I can't say more. Mother, dreams are simply manifestations of our unconscious desires. Freud says that our conscious mind keeps our primal subconscious wants and needs suppressed. Dreams merely represent the repressed urges released when we sleep. Freud also said you want to do your mom. Do you want to do your mom, Petey? Is that what you want? Do you want to do your mom? Uh... There's no good answer, so shut up! This ain't any of that science mumbo-jumbo. This is fact! I got the gift, I had the dream, and you don't mess with the spirits! So no one sets foot outside this house today. Madam Cookie has spoken. I had a dream about me, you, and your sister. We never did that one. But Pops, you can't keep us locked up in here. It's child abuse. We got stuff to do. Look, we all agreed to do this to make your mother happy. Sure, for a day or two. But I don't want to make my mother happy for any longer than that. Come on. It'd break her heart to find out she's not a real psychic at this point. But you don't understand. I'm supposed to meet the cutest guy at the library, where we will read our brains out. And I'm supposed to go to the Regina Comic Con with Billy Allison. It's the first year they'll have two people. And I gotta do this thing. That kid's not gonna break his own legs. Oh, you think I like this any more than you? I wanted to golf today. But if I can sacrifice what I want, you can too, all right? I said, all right? Yes. Fine. Good. I'm going back to bed. Like I'm gonna miss golf because of some stupid dream. <gasps> Careful, Jimmy. You could have killed yourself on that thing. What are you waiting for, Jimmy? Just savoring the moment, Cheech. Just savoring. Okay, legs shoulder width apart. Slight bend at the knees. Check the backswing. And... Oh! You okay? You want to take a break? No, I'll play through. Just take the penalty. No, I can make this. You want a break now? I'll play through. I'll play through. I'll play through! I'm playing through! Hey, look at that. A little Australian boy. Sorry, mate. I need ya. Hey, Jimmy. I'm starting to think Cookie's dream may have been about you. I'm playing! God damn it! Okay. Legs shoulder width apart. Slight bend at the knees. Check the backswing and. Psst. 
so worth it. And where do you think you're going, young lady? Out. I don't think so. Are you trying to get yourself killed? Did you not hear a word I said earlier? I know, the dream, I'll die, blah, blah, blah. But, Mom, I have to go. He's so cute. And he's a goalie. We met when I was fixing the hockey game. He's really good with his hands. What? We just kissed, I swear. Okay, he may have touched my boobs a little. Okay, a lot. What's third base called in hockey? You fixed the hockey game? I had to. Daddy said we had to make your predictions come true. <gasps> oh, my God. I wasn't supposed to say that. Oh, well, the cat's out of the bag. Bye. Petey, is this true? I am not gonna lie to you, Mother. It is. You fixed my predictions? Every single one of them? Not me. It was Dad's thing. I didn't want any part of it. A lie is a lie is a lie. Are you trying to tell me that your father was sneaking around all over town this entire time, making every one of my predictions come true? Why would a person do that? Believe it or not, he thought it would make you happy. Well, you know what? It did. i never been so happy in my whole life. And what's wrong with you <gasps> that you wouldn't? What, you're too good to lie to your mother? Uh... Get out of here. I can't stand to look at you. And you better think long and hard about your morals, mister. I can't believe that big palooka went to all that trouble just for me. That lying, conniving, manipulative sack of I married an angel. Jimmy, sweetie, I'm coming to talk to you. Oh, ah, jeez. Ah. I know what you did, Jimmy. I've been here the whole time, I swear. I know you fixed my predictions. What are you talking about? You went behind my back, you deceived me, you made our children deceive me, you played me for a fool. It's the sweetest thing anyone has ever done for me. You fucking kidding me? On the outside, you may be tough gangster, Jimmy Falcone, but underneath all that macho and beef and provolone, you're just a big old teddy bear. And I don't need the gift to tell me that. So I'm gonna close the shop. After thinking I had the gift, I could never go back to faking it again. But Cookie, that's the thing. It turns out you do have the gift. That's sweet, but you can stop now. No, I'm serious. You have the gift. For real. Stop it, Jimmy. It's over. I ain't lying. Every single one of your predictions came true. Sure, we rigged a bunch of them, but they still came true. They all came true. Give it a rest, will ya? You tried to con me. It was sweet, but you're pushing it. I'm not an idiot. Cookie, I'm telling you. Now you're just pissing me off. One more word and I will cut you, you guinea bastard. Well, look at that. They made Pluto a planet again. How you doing? I used to be Jimmy Falcone, a big shot in the Gambini crime syndicate. But I ratted out my friends, so my family and I had to go into witness protection. The thing about witness protection is, you can't just start off being witnessly protected. You gotta learn to be a whole other person. And that ain't easy. So remember, you're no longer the Falcones, you're the McDougals. What's your name? Jimmy Falcone. No, your fake name. Oh, my fake name is Tommy McDougal. Don't say my fake name. I don't know your fake name. We'll come back to you. Now, Debbie, would you please get me a glass of water? Debbie, would you please get me a glass of water? Gina, your new name is Debbie. I know that, but get your own freaking water. Come on, people, you're moving in two weeks. One slip up and your cover will be blown. When do I get my nose job? There is no nose job. Boob job? No boob job. Hand job? There are no jobs. I thought you said I have to get a job. Yes, you have to get a job, Tommy. Who's Tommy? You're Tommy. I killed a Tommy once. Nice guy. Ah! And that was when they decided we should stick with our real first names. And then they shipped us off to Vagina. Regina. Saskatchewan. But if any of you think changing our name is gonna change the Falcons, Forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the couple with the Gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it! Oh, forget about it! Thanks for picking me up, Cook. No problem. 
But do you think tomorrow you can take the bus? I gotta take the kids to the doctor. You ever been on a bus? They smell, they're filled with derelicts and slobs and people filled with disease. Let the kids take the bus. Oh my God, Jimmy, oh. Snake Hammer. They're playing tonight in Saskatoon. You know, they've always been my favorite band. My sister and I never missed a single Snake Hammer concert. These guys do one show in 10 years and where do they go? Saskatoon, Saskatoon. Everybody loves Saskatoon. Oh my God, she's gonna be there. My sister's gonna be in Saskatoon tonight. Snake Hammer, grab it by the handle. Snake Hammer, put it in your toolbox. I'm gonna break out my leather pants and my hammer halter. And best of all, I'm gonna see Rosalie. Jimmy, we're going to Saskatoon. Like hell I am. What are you talking about? I could see my sister. This might be my only chance to ever see her again. But baby, it's Saskatoon. I'm a vagina guy. How could I go to work and look the other fellas in the eye? Oh, they wouldn't know. I'd know. Fine. Don't do me any favors. I'll go myself. Then who will make dinner? Well, it wouldn't kill you to miss a meal, you fat f Jimmy, Cookie, we'll have none of that public cussing. Your outdoor arguments are bringing too much attention and you risk exposing yourself. I will if you will. <laughs> oh, here she goes. Don't take her seriously, McCool. She's just trying to piss me off. And it's working! Will you two stop? This kind of behavior is not Canadian. We are a polite people who keep our true feelings bottled up. If we must express ourselves, we do it with silent resentment, flowering looks, and suppressed rage, all the while maintaining a delicate balance of denial and shame. That's the Canadian way. Do you think you can do that? You take denial, I got shame. Splendid. My workday is done. Oh, is that a Cuban? Mr. Goody Two-Shoes smoking illegal cigars. Nothing illegal about it. The government of Canada does not maintain antiquated foreign policies. And our beer tastes better too. For Canada, proud to be shameful. Hey, Petey, how about a little Grand Theft Auto? Gina, I'm studying. I don't have time for a video game. Who said anything about a video game? <laughs> You're so funny, Gina. Funny? Funny how? You mean the way I talk? What's funny about it? Funny like I'm a clown? I amuse you? I make you laugh? I'm here to f amuse you? What do you mean, funny? How the f am I funny? Yeah, like a clown. <laughs> now that's funny. You don't even know for sure that your sister will be there. I do know for sure. And if you'd taken the time to get to know my sister, you'd know she never misses a snake hammer show. But you didn't take time to get to know my sister because you didn't take the time to get to know me. Because you don't pay attention. I do so pay attention. Cheech, you're not going to believe what I found out about Canada. You can legally buy Cubans here. I know. I got a closet full of them. Mumbo! Please, senor, let us see. Wow, you can buy anything in Canada. Me and Gigi are going to the cigar store. Tell your mother we'll be back in 20. Hospital. Ah, this is the life. Sure is. Makes you wonder, why can't you get these in the States anyway? Beats me. Cuba has a lot to offer. Cigars, baseball players, Gooding Jr. I would like to go to Cuba one day and say, why did you make that gay boat movie? No, that was Leonardo DiCaprio. I don't want to argue politics with you. Let's just enjoy our smokes. All right, bye everyone. I'm off to see Aunt Rosalie. See you in the morning. Hammer the snake. Where's the car? Jimmy! Petey, where's your father? I like eggs. We meet again, old friend. Where the hell is he? That stupid, selfish jackass! I'm gonna kill him. This is Jimmy. I'm trapped inside my phone. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm just busting your balls. I can't believe you! You took the car when you knew how important this was to me! I may miss my sister if you don't get home soon, so you better call me the second you get this, you stupid, selfish f**k!
Gee! <laughs> hey, that was great, Jimmy. Great smokes, great booze, great conversation. We ought to spend more time together. Cheech, I'm with you all the time. Wait, that was you? Keep an eye open. I gotta take a leak. Hang on, I gotta go more. Look, I don't wanna get into some kind of pissing contest with you. Why? Because I can pee farther? Is that a challenge? You're on. Okay, we'll call it a draw. I'm gonna kill him. I am so gonna kill him. No, no, I'm gonna almost kill him. Then let him heal, then I'll kill him. No, then I'll almost kill him. Cuba Gooding Jr. was in Boys in the Hood with Lawrence Fishburne, who was in Apocalypse Now with Dennis Hopper. You inconsiderate child. Cookie, please. I'm in the middle of a game here. You took the car. My only chance to see my sister, and you took the freaking car. Oh, man, the concert. Cook, I'm sorry. You're always sorry. What good does that do me? You never listen. You only care about yourself. No, I'm caring about you now. See, here I am standing and talking about caring. If that ain't caring... Stop it! My sister's gone, the concert's over, and so are we. You no longer live here. Fine! I'll sleep in the car! Where'd I put it? Where am I gonna go? What am I gonna do? How'd I get into this mess? I've never seen her this angry before. I mean, we've had some big fights, but I've never had to talk to myself for this long. I wonder if that's the same RCMP Special Agent Straight McCool that I know. Jimmy, what are you doing here at this hour? Cookie threw me out and it's my own damn fault. I have nowhere to go. Oh my goodness, come in. You'll catch your death. Wow, this is the coolest place in the world. It's like Caesar's Palace meets Old Yeller. Precisely what I told my decorator, Jimmy. Have a seat. Thanks for letting me crash here. My pleasure. Now, let's go over the rules. Rule number one, no feet on the table. Rule number two, no smoking. Rule number three, no littering. No writing on foggy windows, no usage of the word irregardless. Brush after every meal, lights out at 10.50, and no masturbating where I can hear it. Cheese and whiskers, it's like Toronto Union Station around here. Jimmy, Cookie wanted me to give you a message. Uh, I want to make sure I get this right. And take your f***ing uncle with you. What? I'm sorry, Cook. I screwed up. I don't know what's wrong with me. You deserve better, and I'll try harder. I'm tired of your apologies, Jimmy. This may have been the only chance to ever see my sister again in my life. I don't see how I'll ever be able to forgive you. I can't even forgive myself I'm such a jerk. There you go. Me, me, me. I'm a jerk. I'm an idiot. I'm an asshole. All you think about is yourself. So go lead your selfish life without me. Ugh. <sighs> What about my clothes? And my piano? And my safe? And my anvil? And my feather? Ow! I'm telling you, I've never seen her like this. This was beyond anger. She didn't yell once. It was terrifying. You know what, Jimmy? I got lady troubles too. Mine is a real ball buster. Nothing I do is ever good enough, and one of these days, I'm just gonna go up to her and say, I won't take this anymore, Mom! You know what, kid? Today's your lucky day. I got me a little cabin in the suburbs. Come on by and we'll commiserate. Commiserate loves company. Schwa, schwa, schwa. <laughs> Women, schwa, 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 slut. <laughs> schwa, schwa. <laughs> Lonely. There, there, schwa, schwa. You know, me and Cheech, we got a little cabin. You know, Premier, we got a little cabin. Little cabin. Schwa-schwa's! schwa My Premier, I didn't even vote for you. Then the joke's on me! I didn't think you were old enough to vote. Chug, 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 chug! Be at peace. If you can't enjoy how it goes down, 
You'll never like how it comes back up. Man, I never thought they'd all show up. I was just being polite. Hey, Jimmy, isn't that the guy you whacked because he figured out who you were? Hey, yeah, I hate when they come back. Hello, Jimmy. And you must be Uncle Cheech. Wait then, hey, listen, I gotta ask you something. I'm not sure how to put this, but didn't I kill you? Actually, that was my robot double. And I'm glad you whacked him, because I think he was trying to kill me. What? You have robots? Of course, Jimmy. I'm a master inventor. I wouldn't be nearly as wealthy as I am if I didn't have an army of robots working to undermine my competitors. But I've said too much. What? You have robots? Uh, just the one, but you killed it. Oh, dice. Excuse me. Come on, Jimmy, let's go play. Look, even the dead guy's having fun. I'm not really in the party mood, Cheech. I gotta get Cookie back. I gotta think of something big, something huge, something so grand, there's no way she won't forgive me. Like what? I'm thinking an Xbox. Jimmy, I've been divorced six times. I think I know a thing or two about marriage. She threw you out. It's over. Time to live a little. I don't know. Look, you can wallow and mope for months, but let me tell you something. She ain't moping. She's out there, jumping up on tables, shaking her money maker, rubbing her hoo-ha all over the bar, and buying drinks for every guy who pinches her onion, all in your dime. That sounds like our wedding night. Move over! The kid is back! <gasps> what in the Queen's name is going on? Jimmy, what have you done? It's not my fault. It just sort of happened organically. Here, have a beer. That one's on you. That's it. Jimmy, Cheech, you are no longer welcome here. Everybody out. Not so fast, Mountie. Premier O'Shea. Under the laws of eminent domain, your cabin has been annexed by the great province of Saskatchewan. So saith the Premier. But, Your Honor, eminent domain can only be used in times of war. Then I declare war on your lame ass, so piss off! Thank you for hearing me out, sir. Hey, McCool! Bring back some Cheetos! Chin up in the face of adversity. There are those worse off than you. Stand tall and carry on, and enough with the sad music! Ah, Peter McDougal. The only member of the family who's never let me down. <laughs> I stand corrected. Hey, Teresa, wanna play Candyland? Sorry, Gina, but I stopped playing kids' games once I got tits. You sure? I changed it a little. That's pretty good. You're funny. Funny? Funny how? And I would really think hard about your answer. Don't be alarmed, Cookie. I found him with his tongue stuck to a lamppost. He has a mild concussion and he's lost his mind. Oh, Petey, why didn't you tell me you lost your mind? He'll be all right, thanks to me. All he needs is a good night's rest. Apologize. I don't know how to thank you. No need. You're going through enough yourself. I know all about you and Jimmy. He's been staying at my house, which I've been forced to leave. That selfish blob of spit. Tell me about it. I gave him a whole list of rules, but it never dawned on me that I had to add and flush. He's a pig. So, where are you staying? I'm hoping to find a dead deer and sleep inside its carcass. Is that as gross as it sounds? You have no idea. Then you have to stay here. You wouldn't be in this mess if it weren't for me. Come on in. We'll make some more mess. <laughs> that wouldn't be appropriate. I'm kidding. I insist. You'll stay here tonight where it's safe and warm. I suppose it's preferable to a dead deer carcass. All right, but on the condition that there's no hanky-panky. How about just panky? <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. Is that my lipstick? Who's funny now? <gasps> Did you use my lipstick to draw a picture of some poor girl named Thursa? It's you, dumbass. Whatever, I want that lipstick back, you little squirt. One more step and the lipstick gets it. You wouldn't try me. No, no, she means it. And you have a big ass. That's it. <laughs> Give it back to me. <sighs> What's this about? She stole my lipstick. She wouldn't play with me, and she called me funny, so I swiped it and made a hangman game where I killed her and told her she had a fat ass, so you can't play.
by me? You girls don't know how lucky you are to have a sibling. I was an only child, no one to play with but myself. That came out wrong. Teresa, put your things where Gina can't get them. Gina, use your artistic talent to draw happy things like rainbows and unicorns. Problem solved. That was really impressive, McCool. Jimmy would just let them fight and then make fun of the loser. They're good girls, Cookie. Not outwardly, of course. Is this better? I'll take that as friendly sarcasm, Gina. You are quite funny. <laughs> Jimmy, you bet on the bear? Does he s*** in the woods? Jimmy, this is such a fantastic thing, you schwa schwa. To have this house, and this party, and the schwa schwa schwa. I don't know, I've been trying to enjoy myself, but the truth is, I can't stop thinking about Cookie and what I've done. Meno, what you do is a service for the whole community. You are a mother schwa schwa genius. <laughs> Create all this and then get rid of that Shwashwa Mountie. And he moves in with your wife? What? Son of a Shwa! I gotta do something to win my wife back, and it's gotta be even grander than an Xbox. Somehow, I gotta get Cookie together with her sister. But how? Jimmy, I can help you. What could you do? I'm a billionaire entrepreneur, world renowned inventor, decorated scientist, and believe it or not, I'm a heterosexual man who understands women. All right, let's get these two broads together. You know, it's a proven fact that anything we can do, they can do better. They like to hear that. Oh, little Gina. Oh, Teresa. Don't look, man, don't look. Whoa, Cookie. No wonder she wanted me to do the vacuuming. I'll get it. McCool, I'm here to see Cookie, but I want to say I'm sorry about the party and everything. Thank you, Jimmy. I hope you're not alarmed by my presence in your home, but I assure you nothing happened that would cause me to be less than proud. Uh, so does that mean you did her or you did not do her? God, no. Good. Then these are for you. Why, Jimmy, your apology was valiant enough. You didn't need to buy me flowers. I didn't. We broke a vase in your living room, and I thought you'd want him. Now get the hell out of my house. Cookie! Didn't I tell you to f*** off? Because if I didn't, I'd be more than happy to tell you again. What are you smirking at? Get ready to forgive me. Over my dead cookie! Rosalie! Oh my god! It's really you! I, I never thought I'd see you again! You just disappeared! One day you, Jimmy, the kids were just gone! I can't believe you're really here! I talk to you every day in my head. That's because you've always had voices in your head, you crazy bitch. I missed you so much, you painted hoe. Jimmy, how did you make this happen? I called in a favor. Baby, I screwed up. And I had to fix it for you, because I love you. I love you too, you big cheese ball. I love you too, you big cheese ball. I'm sorry, that was weird. Weird. Cheese ball. Weird. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. It was a long flight. I'm just a little tired. 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 What's going on? Nothing. It's just the excitement of seeing my sister. 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 Oh my god! Gimme! Cookie! Hit the dirt! Oh, they didn't use the nuclear battery. Busted. What the hell is going on? That wasn't your sister. It was a robot. Look, I'm sorry, but there was no way I could get to Rosalie for real. This was the only thing I could think of to get you to stop hating me. So, would you mind going inside and tossing me my other piano and I'll be on my way? Jimmy, I never hated you, and I never could. How many men would go to the trouble of building a nuclear-powered robot sister for their wife? Six? One. And I got him. And you're never gonna lose him. 
How you doing? I used to be Jimmy Falcone, a big shot in the New York crime family. Now I'm in witness protection in Canada. But I'll never forget that day. I was forced to leave the only home I've ever known. Cookie, kids, get your butts in gear. Let's get this vacation started. Canada awaits. Daddy, just because we're going overseas doesn't make this a vacation. I ain't denying it. I was in denial. I couldn't face the fact that I was leaving everyone I ever loved and taking my wife and kids with me. Isn't this fun? A family road trip. Who's up for another round of window uppy downy? Up, down, up, down. Whoa. Up, up, he down. always knows what it's gonna do. All right, you'll be under RCMP protection from here on. Off you go. It's cool. <laughs> Welcome to Canada. Bienvenue. Come along, I have blankets and whiskey for all of you. This will warm your cockles. If it's gonna warm my cockles, I'll need a bigger blanket. I'm Special Agent Straight McCool. My mission is to help you assimilate, keep a low profile, and ensure you don't violate our nation's laws. I'm sorry. Violate what? <laughs> what a spirited group. I loved this assignment the minute I was given it. Let the protection begin. Hop in. You gotta be shitting me. And then they took us to this crazy place called Vagina... Regina. Saskatchewan. But if any of yous are thinking about a vacation up here, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. City, home of the Jews, the body of mobster Paul Vincenzo was pulled from the Hudson River. Foul play is suspected. Hey, look! Pauly the target got whacked. I can't believe it. He was always so careful. I wonder who did it. I'm guessing Vinny April did it. The Hudson's always been his go-to. Nah, look at the bruises on his face. Must have been Benny the Bruiser. My money's on Timmy, sissy bum. That guy'll f you up. Two ones? Holy craps! Snake Eyes! It was my cousin Sammy! That's the worst nickname ever! No, it's my cousin, comma, Sammy. Comma, Sammy? That's even worse. Your nephew, Nimrod! Snake Eyes Sammy! The guy's in trouble! If we can figure out he did it, so can Paulie's crew! Which means he's about to get whacked! I gotta save him! Ah, he's always about to get whacked. He's a good boy. You know, I still can't believe you stole Cookie from him. Whoa, I didn't steal no one. He was sent to Juvie, and Cookie needed his shoulder to cry on. All I did was show up with a hanky and a salami. You were so sweet, you big lug. You repoed my heart. And you stole mine. And then I stole you that necklace. So I hereby announce my candidacy for student council president. What's your platform? My platform? Thanks for asking, concerned student. If you elect me, I will ban all corporate sponsorship from school ground. Let's send the message that young minds are not for sale. Who's with me? That was painful to watch. What I have to say is important. I, I just can't get anyone to listen. Oh, little brother, you're so lame. The key to drawing a crowd isn't what you say, it's what you show. Thanks for coming to my brother's president thingy. We love you! And I have loved a ton of you. So I want you all to vote for my brother on the day you're supposed to vote, whenever that is. The issues. Tell them the issues. First off, more corporate sponsorship. <laughs> it's no more corporate sponsorship. Oh, it's just one word. It doesn't matter. More bullying. <laughs> It's no more bullying. You have to add the word no. Okay. No more funding for music and the arts.
I got your message, Jimmy. How can I be of assistance? I got a problem. My cousin Snake Eye Sammy whacked Pauly the target. That's a serious accusation. I meant it as a compliment. But trust me, it was Sammy. He left his dice that always come up ones. All us wise guys have calling cards. My dad left an Italian sausage. Cheech left a cocktail onion. My calling card was a calling card. I figured I'd give the grieving family some minutes. I get that. Horse also likes to leave a calling card. Hey, same as Johnny Brand Flakes. You gotta get Sammy out of there. When police guys track him down, they'll torture him to rat me out. How could Sammy know where you are? I texted him. Mom, you have to talk Teresa out of running. She's just gonna embarrass herself. Petey, I think it's great that your sisters finally realize there's more to life than binging, purging, and shopping. Are you sure you're not a little threatened by your chances? Are you kidding? I'm totally threatened by your chances. That's why you gotta get her out of this. Petey, I'm not going to choose one of my children over the other. I love you all equally. You'll just have to make the best of it. Don't say I never do you any favors. I never say you don't do me any favors. Your whole job is doing me favors. I know, I just wanted a good entrance line. Hey, cuz, guess who? Sammy! Jimmy. <laughs> hey, everyone, Sammy's here. I'll leave you two to your embrace. But remember, Jimmy, you vouched for him, so you're responsible for him. Hey, how you hey, doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. How's it going? How is the trip, cuz? A breeze. Canadian cops are so freaking friendly. Which reminds me, I got presents for all of yous. Cheech, you son of a gun. Petey, you's getting so big. Teresa, holy moly, you must be the little squirt. And Cookie, I'm sorry I dropped your present in a squad car, but may I say, you look like a million. You're so full of it. Keep it coming. <laughs> Wait a sec. Is that pasta for Joel that I'm smelling? Your favorite? Welcome to rejoin us. Stun gun? Just what I always wanted. I'm a huge fan of your work, Cousin Snake Eyes. I can't wait to learn from the master. Ah! I'm all yours, kiddo, as soon as I'm done catching up with the real master. I am humbled to be in your presence. Really? I thought the folks back home would be mad about how I ratted everybody out. Ah, forget the ratting. Concentrate on the killing. You whacked Don Gambini, for Christ's sakes. You're a legend. A legend? Really? You kidding me? Your nickname back home is the guy who whacked Don Gambini. Now that's a nickname. So much better than that Cousin Karma guy. The guy who whacked Don Gambini. It's got a nice ring to it. Wait, you saying I can go back home and they won't whack me? Oh, they'll still whack you, but with respect. Oh, that's so nice of them. But Sammy, I ain't like I used to be. I keep a low profile, stay out of trouble, and now you got it too. Sit down. Let me explain how life here works. <laughs> Gina, if you're gonna have a stun gun, you gotta use it responsible. Give me that thing. First off, you gotta... Jesus! What's wrong with this? They used to have a safe... Take it! Just take it! Cookie, I'm sorry I dropped your present in the squad car. I feel terrible. But you look great. I had to give you something. So, here. Oh, that's beautiful! Wait a minute. Isn't this the same necklace you gave Teresa? No. Mom, I can't find my new necklace. Maybe. <laughs> Sammy, you haven't changed one bit. Neither have you, Cookie. You haven't aged a day since high school. Yeah, those were good times. Remember the time we made out in the confession booth and confessed in real time? How could I forget? It was like, oh, God, Hail Mary. Oh, God, Hail Mary. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and remember that time at junior prom when we kissed on the dance floor and the principal separated us so you gave him a wedgie? It was my very first kiss. And my very first wedgie. Mm. 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 Sammy, get out here! What are you drinking? So, that just happened. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Will you quit talking about my womb? Jesus Christ, you talk! It's not that big a deal. You got a light? I... I can't believe it. Yeah, I know it's bad for me. I'm trying to cut down. I tried the patch, that works for All right, let's get down to business. Your ex kissed you, and now you're feeling ashamed and conflicted. 
You know exactly what's going on in my heart. You're truly miraculous. You do know I'm a figment of your imagination, right? You're too modest. Whatever. These feelings you have are completely normal. You fell for Jimmy because he was a bad boy, but he ain't no more. Enter Sammy. And these feelings won't go away unless you do something about them. You think I should tell Jimmy? Hell no! Do you know how Joseph was when I had someone else's kid? Moping and whining all the time? He wouldn't let it go. Always asking, who was bigger, Mary? Who was bigger? Who needs that, Zorus? So what are you telling me? Get it out of your system. Have some fun with a guy. <gasps> you mean commit adultery? I could never do that. Technically, you already have. No, I haven't. When Jimmy gives it to you, you think about Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise, Carrot Top. I don't know what that's about. The point is, it's a slippery slope. No, there's a big difference between thinking about someone and doing him. I cannot believe the Virgin Mary is telling me to have sex with another man. You're gonna burn in hell anyway, so what are you waiting for? These commandments aren't gonna break themselves. I figured I'd give you a tour. Get you used to your new home. Oh, after that meal, a walk's just what I need. Ain't nothing like that woman's cooking, huh? She's a real keeper. Yeah, cookie's the best. So, you guys happy? Yeah, sure. For real happy? Or I'm just saying that because I'm a married guy and I'm dead inside happy? Closer to the first one. On a scale of one to ten. Sammy, what are you getting at? Whoa, this is the little Italy in this town. Ain't it great? Sometimes we just come here and hang out for hours. How's the food? You kidding me? The place is run by a Chinaman. It won't happen overnight, but you'll adjust. See? Look at them. That used to be us. You're misremembering. We used to sneak up behind wimps like that and take their money. Then we'd force them to tell us where they lived and hold up their parents. Sammy, cut it out. Listen, going straight ain't bad. Especially in a city where there's, like, zero crime. Exactly. It's a freaking gold mine. We're gonna clean up here. No. Look, I pulled a lot of strings to get you into witness protection. Well... One, I only got one string, but I pulled it. So we can't live the old life. Now come on, let's go to Little Italy and get an egg roll. This is where I work. It's a good job, a great job. I love this job, proud of this job. You believe me? Jimmy, this is my bad. I was probably unclear when I explained it. Our policy is that staples must be lined up vertically, not horizontally. That's it. Do you have ow, any ow, ow, idea ow, 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 who ow, ow. this man is? So, anyway, Toby, I was wondering if you could give my cousin a job. You'll just wind up making a fool of yourself. It's not like this is something you even care about. You're the one who'll make a fool of herself. You don't even have a platform. Hello? No, a platform is issues. A president should know this. You don't have any issues. Well, actually, you have lots of issues, but nothing to run on. Politics is a bitch. Bitch. Issues I'm, like, running on. If you elect me your school president, you will get to look at me all the time. And girls, if you don't vote for me, I will so screw you over. Thank you for seeing me, Jimmy. I didn't know I had a choice. Well, you didn't. I was being polite. Although I guess it was rude of me to say that, and for that, I'm sorry. Uh, me too? What's up? The crime rate, Jimmy. And I have no doubt that it's mostly due to your cousin Sammy. You can't prove nothing. Not yet, but it's just a matter of time. If Sammy goes to jail and talks, we'll have to move you to Quebec, and you have enough trouble with English. Do you really want to live somewhere where they speak French? I'm torn. I love their fries, toast, and kissing, but berets make my face look fat. I'm not kidding around, Jimmy. Get him in line, or else. A Canada with a per capita murder rate only slightly worse than Denmark. I just spoke to McCool. You gotta help me with Sammy. What's wrong? The guy's robbing anything he could get his hands on, and he's gonna ruin everything for us. You're being too hard on him, Jimmy. <laughs> Let me see that. It's so much fun, Ma. Best toy I ever got. 
So this is what a stun gun looks like. So where was I? Oh yeah, Sammy. You're being too hard on him. He's a bad boy, like you used to be. I think you're jealous. Why would I be jealous? Did I say you're jealous? I meant Sammy naked. I mean, how can I help? I can't watch him all the time. So when I'm at work and the kids are at school, you gotta keep an eye on his every move. You gotta be on him like white on rice. If he tries to get you off, you dig in and hold on tight. Where he goes, you go. When he comes- Stop it! What? I don't know. Look, Jimmy, as long as we're on the subject of Sammy, there's something I should maybe tell you. Oh, maybe I shouldn't. I don't know. I wish I could have some kind of sign telling me what to do. Guess who just robbed that bank? You idiot! <laughs> now that's what I call a sign. Do you know how much trouble you could get us into? Jimmy, let him go. Let's at least hear his side of the story. Fine. Thank you, Cookie. Okay. I staked out the bank, I hit the bank, I made off with the loot. What a me! Let me at him! Jimmy, stop! He's a reasonable man. Just talk to him. It took us a while to adjust to the rules when we got here. He's your cousin for crying out loud. Blood. Hey, everyone. I'd like you to meet my new doll. Kill him. And in second place, with 12 votes... Jason Hitler! Nine, nine, nine! Don't worry, mine Jason. There are better ways to seize power! And your new president, with 33 votes, Peter McDougal! What? How could I not have won? Teresa, you never registered yourself as a candidate. But Petey said he'd do that for me. You didn't do that for me? Politics is a bitch, bitch. What was that for? Jimmy saves your life, you do nothing but ignore everything he tells you, then you make a pass at his wife, and then you show up with some bimbo! In my defense, I made a pass at his wife and was turned down. That's why I got a bimbo. And what the hell did you kiss me for anyway? It really bothered me. Honestly, Cookie, I've been a wreck about it too. I got caught up in the moment. It was nostalgia. Old times. You look good. And you smelled nice. Knock it off! We may have to move because of what you've done. And as crappy as this town is, this is Canada. Things can always get worse. What are you thinking? I don't know, Cookie. I'm not thinking anything. I don't plan things. They just happen. I'm not smart like you and Jimmy and Cheech. We're out of cheese. Who? Where did all that come from? Sammy robbed the first vagina credit union. He's always been a good boy. No, it's terrible. McCool's already on to him. Sammy's gonna get arrested and we'll all have to move to Quebec City, France. I never liked that, Sammy. We gotta get them their money back, but without anyone knowing it was us who returned it. We gotta somehow break into the bank and make them take it back. The old reverse heist. Nobody freeze! Put your hands down and get up off the floor. Don't do what I say or you'll all get hurt. Exactly. Instead of our laws, we'll be in-laws. Hey, Jimmy, I've been thinking. I'm real sorry about all the trouble I caused. I'll do anything to make it right. You just name it. You're going to help Cheech and I return the money. Did I hear you right? You're going to take perfectly good stolen money and return it to a bank? Those crooks! I've never been so ashamed of this family. Gina. You broke my heart, father. It's go time, boys. Put on your masks. Too bad the mask store was out of friends masks. I had my heart set on being Rachel. Rock and roll. Everyone freeze! This ain't a robbery! Underground, you mugs. Now! Nobody be a hero! Now, what you're gonna do is, you're gonna open a safe, and you're gonna put this money inside it. Have you filled out a deposit slip? It ain't a deposit! Well, if you'd like to make an investment, you'll have to speak with Mr. Fielding. But he's on vacation till Thursday. I just want to give you this money! I can't process anything without an account number. Maybe this'll change your mind. <coughs> well? 
I can't process anything without an account number. This must be where the reverse heist never caught on. Just take it, will ya? We got made! Dirty screws! What are you doing? I don't know. But we gave the money back! Hi. Yeah, for f sake. No! No! Don't you die on me, Sammy. Not now. Not here, not like this. Looks like the bastards got me. Those bastards! It was just a matter of time. I lived a reckless life. I took too many chances. Plenty of unprotected sex. Shh, don't talk. And Jimmy, I gotta get this off my chest. When we was eight years old, I swept 20 bucks from my dad and blamed it on you. I know. It's okay. And when we was 14, and you got caught with all that weed, I was the one who hid it in your locker. Shh, 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 save your strength. And when we were 16, and your sister got knocked up, that was me. You really gotta stop now. All this was a long time ago. And yesterday, I made a pass at your wife. Earlier today, too. You should probably die now. Okay. How you doing? I'm Jimmy McDougal, formerly Jimmy Falcone. I used to be a big shot in the New York Mafia until I turned rat to keep from being whacked. It wasn't easy turning on my old friends, but them turning on me first made it a little easier. But the hardest thing I ever had to do was to tell my family we had to go into witness protection. So, guys, I got something important to say. You know how all my friends are trying to kill me? Yes, Daddy. It's all you ever talk about. You really shouldn't bring your work home with you. Well, I was thinking, to fix the problem, maybe we should leave town. What? I hate you! But I'm Blas Campo! We love it here! No freaking way! For once, I agree with your idiot uncle! No freaking way! <laughs> okay, let's move. And that's how we came to be living here in Vagina... Regina... Saskatchewan. But if you think it's gonna keep this family from sticking together, Forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it! Oh, forget about it! Okay, you, Elephant Man, your pony didn't come in, you're into me for 500. Dollface, you done all right, you got three big ones coming. This ain't been your week, Randy. Your no-show puts you in a hole for 10 large, and I want something now. This just ain't satisfying. But in for a penny, in for a pound. I see. No, thank you for calling Principal Pistagas. Do you know what your daughter did? I just got off with the principal. Got off with the principal. <laughs> this is serious. Gina's suspended for a week. Apparently, she's been selling candy to other kids, which is forbidden on school property. Look, I'm sure she has a good reason. It was probably just to make money. Hey, Ma, guess what? I was sent home early for good behavior. Oh, and how do you plan to explain the rest of the week, young lady? Busted. Damn straight, you busted. Your principal called. No TV for a week. Pissed again! You done? Uh-huh. <sighs> Teresa, can we have a girl talk? Of course. I'm just glad you're finally admitting that you're a girl. A guy starts one Twilight fan club and he's branded for life. 
I need help with a girl. That girl. Now, if she has bad taste, too, you got it made. I can't even bring myself to talk to her. Aw, that's so sweet. Coming to your big sister for advice on love. All right, Petey. I'll have you banging her in no time. I was hoping to carry her books, but whatever works. First thing we need to do is get this girl to know who you are. But she can't know the real you or she'd set herself on fire. You've got to be strong, confident, sure of yourself. Okay, strong, confident, sure of myself. You think she'd like that? Petey, women don't like wimps. They want to be swept off their feet by a dominant, rock-hard son of an oil baron. What? Just go over there and be aggressive. She's yours for the taking. I'm strong, tough, alpha. Strong, tough, alpha. Hey! What? Uh, love me? Wow. Just, wow. That's it. My entire stash. You clean me out. No TV for a week, young lady. Never do something like this again. You've embarrassed the whole family. Come on, no one's really embarrassed. It's just a figment of speech. It's not that. How am I ever going to learn to be a no-good hustler if I ain't got no role models? <laughs> you got me, don't you? But you're all washed up. Washed up? You know, I still got a thing or two I can teach you. For example, I never would have got caught for moving cheap loot like this. Whoa, whoa, this Canadian candy is primo stuff. You can't even get this in the States. Try it. First taste is free. It's all free. We just took it from you. My God, he's choking. Someone call an ambulance. What's 911 in Canadian? Holy mother of God, that is good. It's better than good. It's, what's a word that means better than good? Oh, what's all this racket about? A man can't hear his own pornography. Try this. It's Canadian candy. I thought Pam Anderson was Canadian candy. Maroon. This stuff's better than anything we got back home. Fat Americans are paid through the nose for this stuff. Hold it. Hold it. I'm getting an idea. It's coming. It's percolating. It's percolating. It's dripping. Dripping. Got it! We'll smuggle this stuff into the States and make a fortune. We'll take prohibition to a whole new level. All right, boys, you're off the hook. This is the thing I've been looking for. Something to get my blood flowing. What do you think, Cook? Mm. Oh. Passport. See, Jimmy? I told you bribing a border guard would be a snap. Some suspicious looking boxes, but there's nothing we can do. They're taped shut. <laughs> Great to be back in the old U.S. of A. Hey, everyone. I'm Captain Candy Pants. Come and get your candy in my pants. <laughs> yes, yes, keep going. Dig deeper. Scram, we're taking over. This is our turf now. But I always work here. I'll give you a free taffy pull. I got your taffy pull right here. <laughs> You're all working for me now. You got a problem with that? Like taking candy from a baby. And then selling it to another baby. Here's your taste, boss. The hell you doing in fur coats? I told you to keep a low profile. You're gonna get us all pinched. It's in my wife's name. What did I just tell you? Not too bright, but the good little learners. You know, I haven't felt this alive since that day I got stabbed at the racetrack. Yeah, those were good times. Mister, I'd like four of everything. Looks good. Cheech, give me stuff. There you go, kid. The finest uncut cocoa solids Canada has to offer. Don't do them all at once. Thanks, but I'm not the one who needs advice. We're shutting you dirtbags down! Freeze! Food and Delicious Candy Administration. You're under arrest for supplying a weak-willed American populace with treats from a different and therefore inferior country. I was framed! I'll wait for you, 
Jimmy! I can't believe how much this thing vibrates. Take your time, Jimmy! What in God's name is wrong with you? Uh, hello. I try and I try and I try. I play the bad guy, I play the good guy every day. I wake up and I say, today's the day they'll get it. But do you? No, we don't, we don't. What more do I have to do? I mean, really, you tell me. What more must I do for you to at long last get it? I don't know. I'm not mad, I'm disappointed. Maybe if I can just understand what goes on in those warped little minds of yours. Why would you risk everything for just a few hundred dollars? Jimmy told me to! McCool, you wouldn't understand. Try me. I miss the action. I sit around the house being a dad. I go to work and have a job. What kind of life is that? But something like this, it gave me that adrenaline rush I used to get every day in the old life. Is that all? Well, why didn't you say so? Jimmy, if you want an adrenaline rush, I know just the thing. You gotta be shitting me. This, my friend, is action. Looks more like a bunch of dusty guys trying to put the moves on farm animals. On the surface, perhaps. But look deeper, Jimmy. Imagine it. You're on top of a bull, hanging on for dear life. Your blood is boiling in your veins, adrenaline flooding your brain. Your only thought, to best the beast before he takes your life. You don't hear the roar of the crowd flowering their adulation upon you. You can't hear them chanting. Jimmy! 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 No, they're chanting McCool, McCool, McCool. Jimmy, Jimmy! McCool, McCool! A hundred bucks says Jimmy, Jimmy. Another hundred says I kick your ass! Jimmy, I don't gamble for money. That's what gambling is. But if you insist on humiliating yourself, I will wager you for honor. Great. How much is that in American? The loser must, in a clear baritone, extending from the diaphragm, declare that the other is a better man than himself. You're on. I got one question. If a man does it to a girl sheep, that's not gay, right? I mean, the church is okay with that. I don't know. I'm not Catholic. Hello? What do you mean, hello? I've been trying to reach you for two days. I figured I'd be your one phone call. Cookie, calm down. McCool was my one phone call. They took my cell phone, and by the time I got it back, I forgot. What? Oh, you forgot. I already told the kids you were dead! Gina, your father's alive. Put his cigars back where you found him. I just can't catch a break. Hello? Is this the guy who said, and I quote, I never would have got caught for moving cheap loot like this. Well, you did get caught, and now I'm smoking all your cigars. And that's what you get for cutting me out of my own scam! Cookie, who was that? Jimmy, the whole family's going to hell in a handbasket because of you. Look, Cook, I'm sorry. I'll be home as soon as I can. But I'm at a rodeo, and I gotta prove to McCool that I'm a better man than myself. Could you just say you're at a strip joint, you fat f What did she say? The usual. I'm not sure about this, Teresa. Petey, really? This is how you have to dress if you want girls to notice you. It just feels a little busy. Listen, Dum Dum, I watch a show called The Way of the Pickup, and the guy who hosts it, Enigma, says if you want to get the girls, you gotta dress like a schizo freak. It's called peacocking. Well, I refuse to follow the advice of some perverted charlatan. My dignity is too important. He's been with 482 different women. Should I add a top hat? Okay, Petey, Enigma says that 90% of becoming a successful pickup artist is learning to overcome your fear of rejection. And to do that, you need to get rejected a lot. Teresa, I could write a book about being rejected. In fact, I have. But it was rejected. You're gonna ask out every girl who walks past you, and you're gonna get rejected so many times, you'll never care about it again. But what if one of them accepts? Petey, if you're not gonna take this seriously... Back off, bitch! Those shoes are mine! Excuse me, ma'am, would you like to go on a date? Hello there, miss. You look lovely today. Excuse me, but I, I couldn't help but notice. Oh, Teresa's right. This isn't so bad. Who cares if they don't like me? It's very freeing. I'm a bedwetter. Do you think I have pretty eyes? I masturbate all the time. 
all the time. Hey, you want to play with my boa? Why, yes, I would, young man. Ah! Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. It's okay, honey. I saw you. It's very sexy. Ah, sh You sure you want to go through with this, McCool? I'm not going to go easy on you. It's not my style. So I'll give you one last chance to back out. McCools don't back out, Jimmy. They thrust in. Okay, it's your funeral. I just got one question. What's with these freaking pants? Me? I like them. I enjoy the draft. Woo! Ha-ha! Yee-haw! Yee-haw! Yeah! 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 Woo! Yeah! Ha-ha! Yee-haw! Ah! Okay? I can't take it no more, Cheech. My face is cut, my muscles are torn, my ribs are cracked, and there's no skin left on my ass. You saying you're giving up? Jimmy, you can't. You'd have to tell McCool he's a better man. Plus, you can still win, because a bull riding's worth more points than all the other events combined. How's that for exposition? I don't know. Maybe I can pull it together for one more event. Watch this, Jimmy. No hands! <laughs> Toughest, most manliest man in the whole wide world. McCool. Yes. I can't watch this. You are a better man than I. Thank you, Jimmy. It takes a big man to say that. And I think it's safe to say you found the action you were looking for. Oh, and one more thing. I found something I believe is yours. Hey, Jimmy. He just handed you your ass. <laughs> him! Pops, Pops, what was the rodeo like, huh? What did that copper stupid face look like when he saw you're the biggest, baddest guy out there? Did you ride the horse like this? Huh? Or like this? <laughs> oh, well, you know, I pretty much just rode the horse the normal horse riding way. Wow. I started to think that maybe you'd lost all your moves, that you'd gone soft, you know? But you sure showed me cool, didn't you, Pops? Yeah, I sure did. Too bad you couldn't have been there to see it, because turns out I did so well, so perfected it, that they decided there will never have to be another rodeo ever again anywhere, ever. Thank you so much for walking me home, Petey. It's become such a dangerous neighborhood. You live between a church and a police station. Well, you never know. Well, I guess I should be heading off. No, no, stay. I'll make some cocoa. Um, I'm not sure this is appropriate. Well, why wouldn't it be appropriate? I suppose it wouldn't be if something untoward were to happen. Are you thinking about something untoward? No, 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 of course not. Well, good. Cocoa it is. Hot? Creamy? <gasps> Cocoa. You know, I like talking to you, Petey. People are so hung up with age, but really, it's just a number. But yours is so much higher than mine. You seem nervous, Petey. Are you nervous, Petey? I mean, I guess so. I know. It must be so hard to be a young man these days. All the rules are changing. The pressures, the contradictions, the confusion. Yeah, I'm pretty confused right about now. I know. And I want to hear all about it. There, there. There, there. There. Ah! <laughs> Quite the day you've had. 
You must be exhausted becoming a rodeo champion. Nah, it wasn't too bad. Kind of invigorating, actually. You're lying. Why do you say that? Because I found this. It's not mine. Oh, please. You didn't beat McCool. Odds are he mopped the floor with you. The man is practically built for horse wrangling. Or lassoing, or caressing the body of a middle-aged woman. Why is your upper lip sweating? It's not. And why'd you lie to me? You know I don't care if you win a stupid rodeo or not. It's not the rodeo. It's everything. I used to be someone. I used to be the big man in town. And now, I'm not even a man. I'm just some poor schnook who has to tell a Mountie he's a better man than me. It's demobilizing. You shut your mouth. You're Jimmy Falcone, and Jimmy Falcone's a fighter, not a quitter. I don't give a damn about a rodeo or losing it to some Mountie, but you do. So suck it up and be the man I fell in love with. You're right. I'm gonna take that Mountie down. Hand me my ass. Jimmy, the other way. Ass backwards, so that's where the expression comes from. Manure. Jimmy, what are you doing here? You already conceded. Yeah? Well, I'm unconceited. You know what I said you're a better man than me? Well, I'm taking it back. As you wish, but I do advise against it. There's a reason bull riding is worth more than half the points. It's one of the most dangerous sports in the world. So is cheerleading, but I still do it. Now, out of my way. Where the hell have you been? So unclean. Oh my god! No effing way! You did it! Congratulations! Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh, no more touching! I don't ever want to be touched again! Or smell mothballs! Or see a doily! Or eat a hard candy! Or see dentures come out! Or see weird stockings that go just below the knee! Or see breasts that go just below the knee! He just completely ignored me. That is so hot. Petey! Petey, wait up! All right, Bull. I've got a lot riding on this. So like I told my wife on our wedding night, give me eight seconds and I'll be on my way. Whoa! Ow! Oh! Okay, I asked nicely. Now we do it my way. Oh! Yourself. You have heart. Tremendous heart. I admit it, but no bet is worth this. It is to me. <sighs> All right. If it will make you end this madness, fine. You're a better man than I, Jimmy McDougal. A better man than I. Tell me something I don't know. Jimmy, you did it. He said it. You won. Way to hang in there, Pops. It was amazing, Daddy. Jimmy, can you do it again? I was in the john. I began the day as a schnook, but now I am a man! Me too. How you doing? I'm Jimmy Falcone, a former mafia big shot and current suburban schnook, living in witness protection in Canada. It wasn't easy giving up the old life. My family and me was used to living a certain way, looking a certain way, and mostly walking a certain way. And so I say, a bada boom bada bing. And he goes, what's the matter with your Stugats? People, come on. The sooner you learn how to speak Canadian, the sooner we can send you to your new home. Wait a minute. They don't have American cheese in Canada? They do, but it's called processed cheese. Does it still taste like crap? Yes. For the most part, yes. There's no Cliff's Notes up there? How am I going to almost not fail my classes? They're called Cole's Notes, but I'd recommend studying harder. You're cute. Wait a minute. They call a garbage disposal a 
Garburator? Yes. That sounds sexy. How come they don't have Canadian bacon in Canada? They call it back bacon. What, from the back end of the pig? Why don't they just call it ass bacon? That might go good with that progress cheese. I got a question. Do they call it a stick-up or a hold-up? People, it's not that hard. Bathrooms are called washrooms. Whole milk is called... Wait, this can't be right. It says here it's called... Homo milk. Oh, what kind of sick country are you taking us to? And who exactly milks these homos? But we had no choice but to pick up this godforsaken language before they shipped us off to Vagina... Regina. Saskatchewan, where I'm still trying to learn my ABZs. But if you think just because we live in the Great White North, we're gonna drink homo milk? Forget about it! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. I did it! I recreated the universe! All those Friday nights spent honing my math skills and letting my limbs atrophy have paid off! Time to discover once and for all the true nature of our world! Oh my god, my shoes! Stop! Your shoes aren't in there, they're on your feet! I know! But this is where they sleep! Besides, with no shoes in it, what's so important about a stupid box? Because inside this box is an exact replica of all existence. One glance and I will unravel the mysteries of creation and discover the true meaning of life. Yeah, fine, whatever. Just put it back in my room when you're done. And now, the moment of truth. Wheel over, Stephen Hawking! An endless, vast expanse of nothing. I mean, I knew it would be that, but but it's just so darn big. I'm just a speck. This planet's a speck. I'm a speck on a speck on a speck. At least you have legs. A little pasta bolognese, a nice chianti, some antipasti, and bada bing, that raccoon's going down. Why you gotta waste a good meal? Just strangle it. Jimmy, get rid of that trap. You know how Petey gets when we kill animals. Humane this, and do you have to slaughter them for fun that? Cook, the boys gotta learn. We're on top of the food chain because we evolved over hundreds of years. Before you say anything, kid, I'm telling you this vermin has it coming. Don't go eating my geraniums, buddy. I'm a man and I kill things. What do I care if one little raccoon dies when the universe is endless, human endeavor pointless, and life meaningless? <laughs> Utterly meaningless. Well, that was weird. He didn't even make me feel guilty, which somehow makes me feel guilty. I'll just have two peas, because I had a big glass of water for lunch. Why? Food won't fill the void. Petey, eat for God's sake. There are children starving right beside you. So what? We're all just mites of dust with no reason to live. Whoa, 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 no reason to live? What about the fat payday of a trifecta? That's worth living for. A Fendi bag and store credit? Scratching a real itchy body part. And have you ever seen the tanned backside of a hot Brazilian... Ah! Nut! I was gonna say nut! How about your family? Aren't we worth living for? And you better say yes or I'll kill you. Promise. May God have mercy on your soul, Peter Frampton Falcone. Nice try, but there is no God. What? I've seen the universe, Mother. And it's a never-ending desert of nothing. God has left the building. <gasps> well, if he's leaving, I should be allowed to leave. Do I have to finish my pee? I know I just did. No, wait. There we go. Ah, young Peter, taking a kick at the can at the old kick at the can game. Brings back memories. My father used to kick my can. Now, don't forget to recycle this. Why bother? They're just a bunch of random molecules. Ah, nihilism. Existentialism's ugly cousin. But I defend your rights to your beliefs, so all I can say is... 
Recycle or pay a fine for Canada, where every day is Earth Day. Come in. Cheech, can we talk? I'm worried about Petey. I don't know what's wrong with him, and I don't know what's wrong with me for suddenly caring what's wrong with him. Jimmy, I tell you this every time you worry about the kid. You get him drunk, you get him laid, he'll find the meaning of life. I'm not sure that's good parenting, Cheech. You remember your first time? Sure. Her name was Sharon, and she had the body of a goddess. She needed help changing a flat, flat tire. tire. And then she pulled your pants off and showed you the time of your life. How did you know that? Because she was a whore. Oh, not whore, slut. Whore prostitute. What? Your dad paid her. He told me all about it. He was a tubby teenager who liked Broadway musicals. He had to set you straight. It's true. I haven't listened to Miss Saigon since. I can't believe this, Cheech. I mean, I think about that day with Sharon a lot. I mean, a lot. Like, just last night with Cookie. And it's not just the sex, but how I wooed her, how I won her. It gave me the confidence to do so many other things. Jeez, Jimmy, you're not gonna... Father, how could you betray me so? Sharon, how could you not let me know? One more note, and I swear to God I'll put you out of your misery. Oh, Virgin Mary, I don't know what to do. My dear, sweet little boy's going to spend eternity in hellfire because he doesn't believe in God. If there's no God, who knocked me up? Hey, yo! I need your help. He's my only son. Don't tell me about sons. Mine totally diss me. Chose his father over me. Of course, his dad did have that deluxe apartment in the sky. Please, Mary, stay on topic. And then he goes and gets himself caught up with that apostle gang and literally throws his life away. And for what? Uh, mankind? Please, what they ever do for him? I wanted him to go to med school. But he wanted to be a carpenter. He could have been Dr. Christ, for Christ's sake. But no, he wanted to make chairs. Oy, such a disappointment. Look, Mary, how about Petey? You mean Peter? He was no saint, let me tell you. He made a pass at me at Jesus' bar mitzvah. He had a thing for older women. Not many people know this, but I am the original MILF. I'm talking about my boy, Petey. How do I get him to start believing in God again? All right, all right. Here's what you do. Tell the kid to pray for something. I'll call the ex and make it happen. You do that for me? Oh, thank you so much. No problem. I got nothing going today except lending my image to a piece of toast in Newark. Then I'm wide open. Come on, everybody. Time for church. Jesus Christ, Jimmy. I've been in Canada for six months. I got nothing to confess. As you know, I will not be joining you to worship your tin god. Fine by me. Hey, if he don't gotta go, why do I gotta go? We gotta get everybody out of the house. Petey don't know it, but I hired him a girl and she'll be here any minute. But you were so upset that your father did it for you. Yeah, but I got to thinking about it in the shower and I came around. Ah, church is for suckers. No, it's fun. I love going into the confessional and making the priests blush. I like going in and punching them in the bojangles. But not every week. Petey, I'm trying to accept this whole not believing in God thing. So, does that mean you've canceled the exorcism? No, I already paid for the caterer. Just do me a favor. Pray one time. If God doesn't answer, I'll never bother you again. Indulge the woman who brought you into this world so she doesn't have to take you out. Psh, is she really so naive as to think I can just get on my knees, put my hands together, and say, I pray that a pretty girl shows up on my doorstep and it'll happen? Religion is nothing but one big band-aid on the scab of life. Hi. My car broke down and my cell phone's dead. Can I come in and use your phone? I can't believe it! God actually exists! And he has the same taste as me. Yeah, I don't mind waiting, Auto Club. I'm at a really cute guy's house and his parents aren't home. How could this be? I was certain there was only nothingness and then... She appears. God has spoken. The Auto Club will be here in an hour. Exactly. What should we do to kill the time? This is amazing. Can you hang on? I gotta give thanks. Thanks! I guess now it's my turn to show gratitude for letting me wait here. Thanks again! No, 
I can't. I must reject all sin. Okay. So, what are we gonna do for the next 57 minutes? Um... Buttocks! Triple word score! You have a very rich vocabulary. I'm a big fan of 18th century erotic literature. Brenda, you're amazing. You're the most fascinating player I've ever seen. I can't wait to see which exotic word you'll put down next. Oh. I'm not finished. All right, fellatio. One, two, four, five, seven, eight, ten. Double word score makes 20, and... Well, that's it for me. I thought you were waiting for the auto club. They're taking too long. I'll just drive it to the gas station. Then why did you... Shh. Too many questions. Well, can I see you again? Sure. I can do five to six tomorrow, or a quickie at 7.45. I'll take both. Praise Jesus! Hey, kiddo, what's with the smile? I thought life was a big pile of junk. It was the most amazing thing, Pop. I prayed for a beautiful woman to show up at the door, and then just like that, one did. That's my boy. And then what happened? Isn't it obvious? I found God. I bet you did. We played Scrabble and talked and talked and gazed into each other's eyes and talked some more, and then she left. Petey, if you pray to God for a pony and he sends you one, you gotta ride it. You don't challenge it to a board game. Pops, I've never felt this way about anyone. This weekend, I'm taking her to a church picnic and a scavenger hunt, followed by a screening of Return of the King, Director's Cut. 13 hours of G-rated bliss. 13 hours? At a thousand bucks an hour? That's... F I have distressing news, Jimmy. Yesterday, I noticed a car parked outside your house. I ran the plates and, well, it belongs to a known prostitute. What? A prostitute's not allowed to park her car? She knocked on your door. A prostitute can't knock on a door? And she went inside with only Petey at home. A prostitute can't solicit my son? Okay, I'll give you that one. Soliciting sex is illegal, Jimmy, and that's against the rules. Okay, McCool, here's the thing. Yes, I hired a girl for Petey, but nothing happened. Why would I believe that, Jimmy? Have you met my son? I believe it. But Canada! where the oldest profession is still logging. Hey, where's Petey? Praise the Virgin Mary. He's been spending all his time at the church. I don't know what kind of scam he's running, but I swear to God I'm gonna muscle my way in. You don't have to muscle your way into God's house, Gina. His heart is always open to you. What? You just look like one of those people who don't use electricity. I found a higher calling, and it's called the Lord's Work. That's my son. Now let us say grace. Everyone join hands. Cookie, switch seats with me. I don't want to hold hands with a boy. Dear Lord, God in heaven, Savior of all men, except men who love men, Please pour your golden love upon us. Ew. Cleanse my family of all unrighteousness. I know that's asking a lot, seeing as my sister puts out for anyone with two hands, my uncle's a degenerate, and I'm pretty sure my mother used to pole dance for loose change. What the hell, Petey? Okay, my turn. God, please forgive my son for breaking the fifth commandment and not honoring his mother, and for being a massive douchebag. Amen. Sticks and stones, mother. Which is what we should be hurling at Teresa for parading herself around like a modern-day Jezebel. Who's Jezebel? She sounds fat. Look, kid, you need to learn how this whole religion thing works. I'm very curious to hear what you can teach me about piety. We'll talk about pie-eating later. When it comes to being a Roman Catholic from New York, these are the rules. Every day but Sunday, you do whatever you want. And don't disrespect your mother. Ow! Why'd you hit me? Haven't you read your Bible? An eye for a tooth. So stop telling God I'm a slut. Why'd you hit me? What? I thought it was a thing. There's only one person who truly understands me. Brenda, come here to me. Whoa, here? Yes, I can't wait any longer. It's your dime. Let us pray. Thank you.
<laughs> God be with you, my sweet. Yeah, whatever. Back at you. Hey, how was the date? Magical. We baptized three Jews today. Granted, they were tied up, but still. Anything yet? He won't touch me. I tried everything. Showing him my lower back tattoo, a benediction, eating a banana during morning mass, and sexting him photos of my Bing Bing during the tenth station of the cross. He thought it was a painting of Noah on the Ark. I'm so ashamed. Don't be. Or do be. Honestly, I don't give a shit. Ah, oh, man, I forgot to get her to stamp my card. Petey, can I talk to you? I'm busy, Pop. I'm making Brenda a diorama of the rapture. Look, that's us ascending to heaven, while the rest of the planet burns in hellfire. Look, son, I gotta tell you something. I did this thing for you. Maybe I shouldn't have, but my dad did it for me. I was just trying to help. Jesus will see your good intentions, even if no living human does. Well, Brenda's not really who you think she is. She's... she's a college student I hired to, you know, show you a good time. What do you mean hired? That's ridiculous. She loves me. Does she ever ask if you're a cop? Every day. And I ask her if she's a cute little bunny. Are your dates in one hour increments? So she's a fan of time management. What does that prove? Do lots of men recognize her on the street? She comes from a big family with a lot of uncles who like to spank her. So what? She's a prostitute. What? We haven't even kissed. That's kind of their thing. Damn you! Why do you try to ruin everything for me? Why can't you just let me have a happy ending? That's exactly what I was paying for! This might not be the best time to tell him I used his college fund. I don't care what he says. Brenda is not a prostitute. I refuse to believe it. <laughs> that doesn't prove anything. I will let you pay me for sex. Aw, oh, Daddy, can I have a sit down? Sure, princess. What's troubling you? Well, hypothetically speaking, if you were shaking down someone and a cop got wise and started shaking you down, what would you do? Aw, oh, Gina, we went over this in kindergarten. Always pay off the cops first. You'd give him what he wanted? Sure. Paying off a cop ain't a crime. Well, it is, but you know what I mean. It's a cost of doing business. But I can't give this little rat-nosed Goobans what he wants. He wants everything. It'll cost me a fortune. Hypothetically speaking. Oh, my little angel. In a situation like that, you got no choice but to hit him where it hurts. His kneecaps. I knew it. Oh, kneecaps. You're so adorable. These little kneecaps. Daddy, <laughs> These little kneecaps. Stop, <laughs> stop. Gina, I gotta talk to Dad alone. Sure. Just remember what I told you. Petey, what's the good word? Well, Pop, I want to say that I forgive you. I know that you were just trying to help me by hiring Brenda. Thanks. And I'm sorry it didn't work out with your little hooker girlfriend. Says who? I hate the sin, but I'm still in love with the sinner. I'm gonna save Brenda. But keep it under an hour! And when Chaucer said, Ahoy, did he really mean Ahoy? Brenda! Excuse me, what are you doing? Brenda! You don't have to sell your body for sex. I'll take care of you. Brenda! Young man, there's no Brenda here. Yes, there is. She's right there. Six, no, seven rows up, four, no, five seats to the left. The, the prostitute. You know, Brenda, raise your hand. What the hell are you doing here? I'm here to save you. I know the truth and I don't care. Our relationship is stronger than the strongest man on earth. First of all, my name is Stella. Second, you don't know shit about shit. Our relationship was just business. You think I like spending my free time in a church? I'm a hooker for God's sake. Stella, what are you saying? We spent all that time together. Are you trying to tell me it was for nothing? No, it was for a thousand bucks an hour. Standing here talking to you is for nothing. Excuse me, but may I use the Fuck off! <laughs> you okay, kiddo? Don't bother trying to cheer me up. It'll never happen. First science let me down, now religion. 
There are no answers. Life sucks. You know, I remember when I was 15. Man, I was awkward. Overweight, pimples, four fingers on each hand. But life got better and it will for you. How can you be so sure? This is your time, the age of the nerd. And who's a bigger nerd than you? No one, that's who. One day, you'll invent some cool computer doohickey. And before you know it, you'll be knee deep in Asian chicks. Really? Would I lie to you? You just spent the past week lying to me. <laughs> Nothing gets by my boy. You know, I have been working on a new memory enhancement chip. I'm up to a 60% increase in recall with only a 20% chance of death. Count me in. I'll be your first customer. And you know who that'd be good for? Watch his face. You know who I mean, the guy with the thing we met in the place. This is kind of a happy ending, huh, Pop? No, you don't get the concept of a happy ending at all. Good evening. My name is Peter McDougal. At least it is now. I have also been called a geek, a nerd, a geeky nerd, a nerdy geek, and a geeky geeky nerd nerd. But for most of my life, I've been known as Petey Falcone, son of Jimmy Falcone, one of New York's most notorious mobsters. But despite what you may have read about my father, he's actually been a very loving man who would do anything for his family. Strike three, you're out! Uh, I mean, home run! But then one day, the mob turned against him, as mobsters are prone to do. And they didn't care if they got any of us in the process. But he protected his family and heroically helped convict some of the most horrible men in the country, all of whom were at my communion. And that's how we wound up here, in witness protection in Regina, Regina. Saskatchewan. And if any of you think this story wasn't just one humongous rationalization, Forget about it! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it! Forget about it! Forget about it! I got here as soon as I could, Jimmy. What seems to be the problem? I miss pizza. I beg your pardon? You made it sound like an emergency. It is. See, I'm in this weekly poker game and the guys order these pies, like ketchup on cardboard, and not the good kind. So I was shooting my mouth off and promised to show them real pizza. So I'm kind of committed. You should be committed. And where do you intend to get these pies? That's the beauty part. I know this place back home, best pizza outside of Italy. And they promise delivery in 30 minutes, so they're free. So odds are we won't even have to pay. I'm sorry, no. Such an order may tip off your enemies. As for poker, need I remind you of the pitfalls of gambling? Aw, oh, man, don't you do anything for fun. I absolutely do. I fish, I hunt, I read, I enjoy the occasional menage a trois, I dabble in embroidery and crochet, but what I don't do is gamble. A hundred bucks says you do. Hmm. All right. I know your secrets. It's time you learned one of mine. Whoa! I don't want to know who you manage a trois with. Imagine, if you will, a young McCool. Aimless, directionless, muscleless. And then he discovered the wager. At first, it was just harmless games of gin rummy for a penny a point, but soon, that wasn't enough. It had to be a quarter, a dollar, a hundred, nor did it matter what the game was. Cards, dice, ponies, pigs! Suey, 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 Why do you look like a hippie if it was the 90s? Stay on topic, Jimmy. Never in my life had I felt such a rush. I was hooked. I'd go on week-long binges and forget to feed horse. I put my sainted mother in a home and lost her rent money at the track. I turned my back on almost everyone I cared about, and they me. And I was about to lose the only one I had left. Don't go. Without you, I have no one. You're right, I'll never bet again. I know I've said this before, but this time I mean it. Yes, really. And that was the moment I vowed to put my life together. The moment I decided to be a Mountie. And I have not wagered a penny since. I just got one question. 
What kind of landlord lets you keep a horse in your apartment? Indeed. For Canada! And flashbacks that remain relevant to the storyline! Isn't it a glorious day in Regina? The sun is shining, the snow is melting. One can look out and see endless miles of wheat and wheat. What's up with you? Petey's got a girlfriend. Shut up! Oh, a girlfriend. Tell me about her. Her name's Rita. They kissed in the parking lot behind Mrs. McGeeby's car. Shut up! Ow! Don't ever tell me to shut up. Hello? Yes, Petey's here. Who may I say is calling? Oh, Rita! Petey speaks so highly of you. Mother, no! He speaks highly of us, too. Oh, get the f*** out of here! Mom! Ow! What was that for? Don't ever hit my big brother, you little squirt! Okay. Thanks, Gina. That was really... Two bucks. What? Two bucks! Uh, okay. So, Rita, what are you doing next Sunday? Would you like to come for family dinner? Rita, say no! Run! Good, we can't wait to meet you. Bye-bye. Oh, did you want to talk to her? That's okay. I'm gonna go take a bath. Race five. Shua, shua. So sorry to disturb, Premier. These documents just arrived from Ottawa for your immediate attention. Keep your knickers on, laddie. I'm playing. Put them with the others. All right, Jimmy, you Scottish bastard. It'll cost you five more if you want to see my cards. Or do you not have the balls, you nutless lassie? I see your five and raise another five. Fold. Read them and weep. Kings and nines. Three ladies. Sounds like my crib every night. hey oh. <gasps> Grab a chair, McCool. We need some fresh blood. Uh, thank you, sir, but I don't gamble. Come on, McCool. The engine's taking everything we got. And how often do you hear that? Fellas, if the man don't gamble, the man don't gamble. Schwa, schwa. Where I come from, the only men who don't gamble are ladies. Well, I suppose one hand won't hurt. Uh, Jimmy, I'm a little short on cash. Would you extend a man a small loan? You sure you want to do this? What about everything you said the other day? I've been thinking about that these past few seconds. I haven't gambled in almost 15 years. Clearly a man with a gambling problem couldn't achieve that. Okay, I'll give you a friendly loan at 18%, but this is business. No one's gonna take it easy on you, not even me. Jimmy, if I enter that game, it's you and the others I'd be worried about. Any up, boys, it's my deal. Gentlemen, I don't even have to look at the cards. I look into your eyes and I know what's in your mind. You want us to think you made your straight, but you never got the nine. You made your trip sevens, but you don't know if they're good enough. You're bluffing with an ace-king high and you're cheating on your wife. You're disgusting. Now I know my ABCs. Next time won't you sing with me? <laughs> I see your ten and raise ten more. What are you doing? Nothing. Just a long blink. Open your eyes. No. All right. I still think you're bluffing. Call. Full house. And finish blink. Raise 500 and that should send you home. Jimmy, you just walked into my trap. I see your 500 and I raise you 10,000. <gasps> Bloody oh, hell! Shwa, shwa. Buddy, you're already into me deeper than you want to be. What's the matter? Are you chicken? McCool, you don't got this one. Buck, 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 buck. You started strong, but now Lady Luck is banging another guy. Oink, 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 oink. Just walk away. Moo, mm -hmm. moo. Mm -hmm. Who you calling a cow? All right, you got it. Ten G's more. Four kings. Four aces. What? You owe me 50 large, special agent. I... I... I don't have it. Then I'll put you on a plan. In the meantime, I'll take some collateral. No, not horse. What have I done? <clears throat> I tried to warn you, buddy. Now I own you. For Canada! And... <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll just walk him out from here. <laughs>
Hey, Cheech, I'm making a list of stuff to ask for from McCool. He can't pay us back, so he's gotta let us do whatever we want. What should I put you down for? A puppy. You don't need McCool for that. You can get a puppy anyway. Can I? No, because I'd have to walk it and clean up after it. I'm thinking more like taking a family on a cruise. Me included? Yeah, you included. Then who's gonna watch the puppy? There is no puppy! Jimmy, what kind of sad childhood did you have that you hate puppies? Hi, I need your help. How do I get Rita out of coming for dinner? Why do you want to do that? Because she's Persian, and you know how our family is with people who are different from them. But what's wrong with being Persian? Everyone loves Paris. No, not Parisian. Persian. Iranian from Iran. Oh, you mean like one of those chicks who straps bombs on her chest and goes into nightclubs? I never got that look. No, that's what I'm talking about. That's racist. You take that back. Racism is ugly, and I'm pretty. Mom, Petey said we're racist. And I'm pleased to say I am no longer gambling, and I'm ready to pay my debt. You're a little light. Uh, the ATM was out. Bank messed up the transfer. Checks in the mail? You don't think we heard these before? Dog ate it. He has a dog? All right, I don't have it all. But I'm doing the best I can. I understand. It's a lot of money to get all at once. So, in lieu of cash... There's a number of favors you can do for us. That's blackmail! You owe me 50 G's from gambling. Want to take that up with your supervisor? Jimmy, please, don't do anything rash. I've taken on a whole array of extra jobs. I'll get you your money by any means necessary. Except crime. How do you make money without crime? Indeed. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have work to attend. I miss you, old friend. <laughs> I deserve as much, but I shall get you back. For Canada! Oh, where these boots are made for walking. Are you satisfied with your long-distance carrier? at the newsstand. I don't believe it. I know! They printed my letter! Not that. That's McCool on the cover. I can't believe he'd stoop this low for money. It's really sad. Jeez. I don't know if I should feel bad for the guy or intimidated. There you are. Did you know your son is ashamed of us? What? Petey, get down here! Yes, Pop? Your mother says you're ashamed of us. What the hell's that about? Okay, I'll be honest. This girl I like is coming to dinner, and she's Middle Eastern, and I'm terrified that you, one of you, most likely you, will offend her, and she'll come to hate me for it. Petey, you gotta relax about this stuff. When I was growing up in the old neighborhood, we was all everything. We was all friends. It didn't mean nothing. We called each other Dagos and Hebes and Mix and N-words. You actually used the N-word? Yeah, but only to their faces, never behind their backs. That would be insensitive, something a spick would do. Ugh. You see? Your father makes good sense. Mother, a turban? Really? It's not a turban, it's a towel. Yeah, what's wrong with having a towel head? You guys are killing me. Nobody's killing nobody. Just let me frisk this girl when she gets here. No bomb, no problem. Special Agent McCool can't come to the door right now. Please leave a message in the mailbox. We know you're in there, McCool. No, you don't. He's got a point, Jimmy. Can anyone ever really know anything? McCool, you can't avoid us. It's your job to take care of us. My next payment isn't due until tomorrow. We ain't here for the money. Oh, in that case, may I interest you in some Helen DiCarlo cosmetics? Jeez, you look like hell. Have you lost height? Let me go get my samples. I'll be right back. Look at him, Cheech. He's a shadow of his former self. No dignity, no self-respect. He's given up on everything he cares about. And it's my fault. So? Just saying. All right. 
Who wants moisturizer? McCool, sit down. You know that list of requests we gave you? I think we was thinking too small. First, we'd like to go visit the old neighborhood. Jimmy, you know that's impossible. Then pay up. Fine, I'll work it out. Also, maybe a cruise. Fine. And a puppy. Fine. No puppy! Fine. Come on, McCool, pull yourself together. You're making me feel bad. Where's our usual back and forth of Tony Banter? You know what, Jimmy? You're right. Good, let's get back to it. So, if they do another one of those private rocket ships to outer space, I think Petey would like that. No, no to everything. It all stops now. Yeah, this is what I like. You and me going at it, mambo a mambo. Now my turn. You want me to take this up with your supervisor? You don't have to, Jimmy. I will pay you what I owe you, but I will besmirch my uniform no more. As of tomorrow, I will resign my commission as a Mountie. Holy hell. Bum bum bum. Jimmy, look at this. I'm talking to a squirrel. Bum bum bum. I mean, you should have seen the guy. I know it's hard to imagine, but he looked bad. Real bad. It is hard to imagine. <laughs> I never should have lent a guy with a gambling problem all that money, and then I pushed him on top of it. He's a stand-up guy for a cop. He's always been fair to us, and we could do a lot worse. Even his quitting shows a little back bacon. That's how they say it in Canada. Jimmy, are you developing a conscience? Conscience? Nah. I just got this inner sense of right and wrong that's impelling me toward moral action. What are you saying? I broke him, so I gotta fix him. I'm gonna let him off the hook. Wipe the slate clean. You really are a lovable teddy bear. Yeah, don't tell anyone. Mommy! Daddy! I can't sleep! What's wrong, sweetheart? I heard you and Daddy talking through the wall, and Daddy says he's gonna let someone who owes him money not pay? I don't understand! <laughs> I'm scared! Oh, sweetie, there's nothing to be scared of. The man owes me more money than he's got, and it's destroying him. He's doing it again, Ma! He's doing it again! <laughs> oh, sweetie, it's a sin to let others suffer. Oh, like a hurt animal? Then we gotta do the Christian thing and put him out of his misery. Let's whack him. Aw, oh, Gina. That's very generous of you, Jimmy. I would be forever in your debt, and so I cannot accept. No strings, honest. And the blackmail stops. You can stay a Mountie. It's more complicated than that. To recover from my addiction, I have to take responsibility for my actions, even if that means doing shameful, shameful things. And eh, no one's gonna buy that magazine. Really? Tell me the truth, Jimmy. Do you find me attractive? Okay, we're not going there. Isn't there anyone you'd be willing to take help from? Only a true loved one. But I have no siblings. Daddy left when I was very young and Mummy lost her marbles. All I had was horse. Tell you what, don't quit your Mountie thing just yet. Give me till the end of the week. Can you sign this? Certainly. You want a party? Certainly not. Well, define party. I still don't get it. It's simple. McCool won't let me forgive his debt, so he's just gonna have to find the money on his own. He'll give it back to me, and everybody's square. I have found a satchel of money on the street. It must be returned to its rightful owner. What an asshole. I can't believe it. You try to help a guy, and it bites you in the ass. Well, you know what they say. Try to help a guy, and it bites you in the ass. The funny thing is, I still want to figure out a way to help him. I'll get it, I'll get it. Hi, Petey. Thanks for inviting me. Is that her? I'll be right out. Look, there's no time to explain. Just don't judge me by my family. And whatever happens, I'll protect you. And no, I have no idea why there's a horse in our living room. Hi. You must be Rita. I'm Cookie. She's adorable. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. Come sit. Dinner will be ready in about 10 minutes. So, Rita. Tell me about yourself. What would you like to know? I don't know what I'd like to know. What do your parents do? I knew it. Just because she's from the Middle East, you automatically assume her parents must be terrorists or taxi drivers. I never said- My father is a dentist and my mother is a stay-at-home mom. And no, it's not because her father will punish her mother if she works, thank you very much. Two of my wives were stay-at-home moms. Well, without the kids. <laughs> Basically, they were leeches. <laughs> 
your uncle's funny. Not really, just retarded. So, Rita, are you thinking about college yet? Why? Because Muslim women aren't allowed to go to school? They're just supposed to stay home and be subservient to their man? Is that what you're asking? I give up. Jimmy, you want to ask her anything? Okay. Rita, say something you did is destroying a guy, and all you want to do is make peace. But he don't want peace. He just wants to keep the same old pattern going. What do you do? What's that supposed to be? Some warped metaphor of the Arab-Israeli conflict? Rita, hi. I love what you're wearing. What'd you expect? You people! What, she was supposed to show up in a burqa and a turban going... Daddy, enough! Can you talk about anything other than my race? Me? Race? That's it! A race! Yes, Petey, I'm Persian, and that's all you can see. But I'm a real person with real feelings, and you've done nothing but make me uncomfortable since I got here. I'm sorry, Mrs. McDougal. You all seem lovely, but I don't think I can stay for dinner. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with driving a taxi. It's an honest, decent living. And yeah, I lied. My father drives a taxi. You dirty, racist snob. <laughs> One way or another, them Arabs always explode. Look, he won't take the money from me. If I just give it to you, he'll know it came from me anyway. You gotta get this money on your own. I know he broke his promise to you and you're mad, but he's your best friend and you're all he's got. So you can stay mad at him or you can help him. His life is in your hands. Or you can keep bunking with Cheech for the rest of your life. Whoa! I've never been with a four-legged broad, but I'm open to anything. Don't kiss, please don't kiss. Welcome, bienvenue. My name is RCMP Special Agent Straight McCool. I was just your ordinary run-of-the-mill Mountie until that day I first heard the name Jimmy Falcone. I'd like to request a transfer, sir. Again? You'd be my best agent, but you've got ants in your pants. I've put you on vice, narcotics, homicide. You've cleaned up the entire west side of this country! What's even left for you? Witness protection. What? Forget it, not a chance. Reforming the most hardened American criminals and turning them into respected members of society. What a challenge, what an honor. Can't do it, McCool. You're too valuable to me on the streets. I want the Falcone case, Chief. Nay, I demand it. Don't you nay me, mister. You're too high up for a job like that. I'm not gonna demote my best officer just cause he wants to join the babysitter's club. I had to take action. Perhaps there was something I could learn from Jimmy Falcone. You are so demoted. And that, kind viewers, is how I received this assignment. And I won't rest until this ragtag American household becomes the epitome of fine Canadian citizenship. And if you think I'm ever going to give up on this family... Vagina! You can forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Next item on the agenda. 
As you know, the annual Regina Winter Carnival is here, and one of us will be spending the week manning the tourism booth. Hold up. Did you just say one of us gets a week off to go to a carnival? Well, not so much a week off a as week a week off. Man, I, I would kill for years. that. Hell, I used to whack guys for a lot less. I once whacked a guy just for a Klondike bar. I should write the company and tell them that. They're always looking for positive testimonials. And since I've done it for the past five years, I've decided I should be the one to go. Hooray! Wait. No. Actually, I think it's great that you're going to go to this carnival instead of me. It'll give me a chance to try out some new ideas around here. N new ideas? I was just thinking I'd reorganize the files, clean out the Rolodex, move all the bats and bites on the computer. You won't even recognize the place when I'm done. I have an idea. You go to the carnival. Oh, all right, fine. But you owe me. Cookie, ever see that Tom Cruise Dustin Hoffman movie, It's Raining Men? For argument's sake, I'll say yes. So, this guy has an artistic brother. He's terrible with the socialism, but he's like some kind of superhero. He could count cards. It's hardly a superpower. So, I've been thinking, Petey stinks with people. You ever think maybe he's one of them artistics? Watch how you talk about my son. Ah, he doesn't know what I'm saying. What you making there, sport? It's a high-energy particle accelerator in a bottle. It's like a ship in a bottle, but mine's a miniature high-energy particle accelerator, and it's fully functional. Ain't that something? But you can't go to the store by yourself. Of course I can. Wait, you think I'm autistic? I'm not autistic, and I take offense to your autism stereotypes. Autistic individuals are people like you and I, and have a lot to offer their communities. Petey, where'd you go? Retard land. So, as I was saying, how many toothpicks? Three. Look at this guy. A freaking genius. Hey, hey, hey! Who wants to go to a winter carnival? Oh, a family outing. I've been going stir-crazy here all week. It's always, Mommy this, Mommy that, can I have this, can I have that? He took my this, she took my that, Mommy, Mommy, Mommy. Ugh. It's not about you, kids. A carnival? Rubes and Easy Marks go to carnivals. <gasps> okay, I'm in. I am so going to win Carnival Queen. Do I have time to throw up or should I purge on the way? You ain't going nowhere, kid. We gotta practice. How many cards am I holding up? One. There'll be no stopping them. Okay, later. See ya. Oh, Jimmy, a sleigh ride! Let's go. Just you and me, keeping each other warm, making people uncomfortable, watching us doing it in public. <laughs> oh, it'll be just like old times. Maybe later, honey. I gotta go work the tourism booth. What, you're gonna leave me here all alone? Some husband you are. I know that was sarcastic, but thank you! Say aww. Ah. Mommy will be back soon. Have fun! Wow! Mamma mia, that's an icy meatball! Did you make this? You like? i done a lot of ice pick work in my day, but never with actual ice. Would you like to give it a try? Thanks, but I got my own. Turf, Oliver. And now for everyone's favorite event, where the ladies really get to strut their stuff, it's Parka Time! This is ridiculous. How is anyone gonna know how hot I am? Oh. All right, who wants to see a wet t-shirt contest? No! 
Hey, that's my talent. Why can't we go to the carnival? Just count the cards and we'll do whatever you want. Come on. One, two, three, after three, next after three, next after that. Come on. Tell me when we get to blackjack. That's not how card counting works, Uncle Cheech. The idea is to know when there's a concentration of high cards in the deck which favors the player. You assign positive, negative, or zero values to each card and keep a running count. And I'm not autistic! I wonder what goes on in that tormented brain of yours. He's magnificent! I've never seen anything like I've it! I've been to New York. It looks just like that. Who is he? Yes, who is he? Sweet Lady Gaga! Is that who I think it is? And he's brilliant. The gentle touch, the keen eye. How could this be? He'll be famous. He'll be revered. And revealed. Oh, this is terrible. His enemies will find him and kill him. This is the best ice sculpting I've seen since Ice Pick McGee. I'm going to put you on the cover of Life magazine. Let's see what's under that scarf. Oh, no. I must create a diversion. Face off! Works every time. Jimmy, a word. Sup? You magnificent bastard. You're truly gifted and must never do this again. Oh, come on. I'm really good at this. And I never been good at nothing, except gangstering. Look what I made. It's a work of... What's that word? Rhymes with fart. I'm sorry, Jimmy. It's too high profile. It'll make you famous. <whistles> Two minutes! Roughing! Your enemies will find you and kill you. But it pains me to hide your talents from the world. But I don't want to see you dead. But to not let you share your gift would violate the laws of truth and beauty itself. You done arguing with yourself yet? Yes, no, maybe... no, yes. Come on, McCool, I'll wear my disguise. I won't tell anyone, not even Cookie. No one will know. I'd like to believe you, Jimmy, but I've met you. I swear on the lives of my children. All right, but you'll need a fake name. We'll call you... Jinxie. What, asshole was already taken? Bad omen, kid. We'll come back tomorrow. It's 3 a.m. Where the hell you been? Cook, you have no idea how much work it is. All those tourists needing directions, pamphlets, ideas of things to do. They just take and take. I got nothing left to give. The carnival closes at 10. Where the hell you going each night? Jimmy, tell me the truth. Are you going back to crime? No, I promise. That means you're cheating on me, you piece of shit. Get the hell out. This ain't your bed no more. Cookie, I ain't. I promise. Come on. I'm too tired to argue. I'll sleep on the couch. Oh, Virgin Mary, I need you. I don't know what to do. My husband, I... I think my husband is cheating on me. All right, girlfriend, spill. Tell Mama everything. Don't leave out one juicy detail. I don't know. He, he comes home late every night, exhausted, but with a big smile on his face. He won't tell me why. Does he still want to pork you? I don't know. I try, but he, he just rolls over and falls asleep. Oh, yeah. He's cheating. Uh -huh. What, you want me to lie to you? He's a guy. If he ain't getting it from you, he's getting it from someone. Okay, okay, quit your blubbering. Look, Joseph wasn't giving me the time of day either. Then I hop into bed with God, suddenly he's all over me. Throwing a party in the manger, showering me with gold and frankincense and myrrh. Like I need any more f***ing myrrh. So get out there and make him jealous, girlfriend. Sleep around and win your man back. I could never do that. I took a vow. I... I love my husband. <laughs> Fat freak. <laughs> All right, but don't expect someone to magically appear in the middle of the night and do ya, because that's only happened once. Thinks he can leave me home every night. 
Well, I don't have to stay home. I can have fun without him. So this is that jinxie everyone is talking about. Wow, it really is beautiful. Dogs playing hold up. Skater getting whacked in the kneecaps at the Olympics. Swan and... Mistress. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Cookie. Why are you crying, uh, miss? <laughs> it's... It's just so beautiful. <laughs> and so sad. Sad? Why sad? Because he's cheating on his wife. <laughs> like my husband is cheating on me. On you? No way. I'd... He'd have to be a total moron to cheat on a classy broad like you. You're just saying that. No, I ain't. I'm sure every day he thinks about how special you are and how lucky he is. And if he ain't, then he don't deserve you. How you doing? I'm Jinxie. You're Jinxie? Oh, I love your work. It's inspired. You touch me deep in my soul in a way I never felt before. I was just about to say the same thing to you. Now you're making me blush. Jinxie! I didn't tell you to stop. <laughs> Will you excuse me a minute? What? Can't a guy flirt with his own wife anymore? Remember your promise, Jimmy. She doesn't even know it's me. I could have some fun with this. Sounds kind of twisted. I know. How often does a guy get a chance to seduce his wife a second time? Well, just be careful. Hey, like I'm gonna catch anything from my own wife. I'll wear a rubber. I don't feel right about this, Uncle Cheech. Gambling is wrong. No, it ain't. How do you think I won my third wife? Here, have a drink. Is this alcohol? But I'm a miner. Relax. I put it in your sippy cup. Don't worry. He's got a fake ID. And keep them coming. 21. Player wins. <laughs> Stand, split, double down, stand. <laughs> Another round for all my friends. And a little extra something for you, Puts. Oh, I created a monster. It's beautiful. A pale imitation of the real thing. Oh, Jinxie, I've had such a wonderful time tonight. I don't want it to end. Maybe it don't have to. But, Jinxie, I'm a married woman. You deserve better. You deserve the best. I shouldn't. Yeah, you should. I shouldn't. Yeah, you should. Mm. 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 Oh, it's on. That was amazing. You were amazing. Am I ever gonna see you again? Tomorrow too soon. I got a big show, and it would mean a lot to me to have you there in my corner. I wouldn't miss it. Good night. Good night. Oh yeah, I still got it. Jimmy Falcone still got it. Wait a minute. She didn't know I was me. She thought I was him. Holy crap, my wife just cheated on me. All right, Jimmy, calm down. Go to your happy place. Cookie is your wife. By definition, that means no cheating has taken place. But she didn't know it was me. She thought she was boffing Jinxie. And you are Jinxie. Ergo, she was boffing you. Yeah, with her body. I'm talking about her mind. What does she see in this guy? I repeat, this guy is you. Well, what do I got that I don't got? Jimmy, I'm afraid I can't help you on this one. So I bid you adieu. For Canada! where we keep adultery in the family. Okay, it's time to put on the charms and win back my wife from that son of a bitch, me. So listen, about last night. What? What about last night? I'm sorry I've been working so hard. I know I ain't been a Model T husband lately, but it's a new day and I'm here to make things right. Now, I don't want to come off mushy or anything, but you want to get nailed? Tell you what, you go upstairs and get started, then finish without me. Jinxie! Hit me! Kid, you got 20, you gotta stand. 
You shut your face, old man. Nobody tells me what to do. I said, give me the ace. Holy crap, it's an ace! Woohoo! I knew it! I counted them. <laughs> you see that? I counted them. I'm a card counting mother. F I'm autistic, bitches! You and me, kid. We're going all the way. I knew it from the day you was born. There was something special about you. Sir, would you come with me, please? I never seen this kid before in my life. Good evening, everyone. I'm Brad Wickers, along with Sal Foster, and what a treat we have in store for you tonight. It's Jinxie versus Block of Ice. Sal? As you can see, Block of Ice dominates in height and weight, but Jinxie enjoys speed and a definite reach advantage, so anything can happen. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've been waiting for. The Fighting Iceman, the chip of the old block, the pick of Regina, Jinxie! Must break you. Cookie. Cookie! I love you! I love you too, Jinxie! Jinxie? Jinxie! You bring shame and dishonor to our proud establishment. You can't prove nothing. I'm a card counting mother f That could be anyone. You have disrespected our house and our house rules. In return, we shall confiscate your winnings. Over my dead body. Such arrangements are possible. Wait, Uncle Cheech, he's right. This is no place for a 15-year-old. It's not even legal for me to be here. Let's go. I should turn myself over to the gambling authority. Whoa, 15, you say? Uh, let us not be hasty. No need to get the authorities involved. You may keep your winnings. Go in peace, head shaped like egg. <gasps> You done good, kid. Real good. Thanks, Uncle Cheech. You know, I'm still not really sure why I said and did all those things I normally would never do. Yep, booze has a way of doing that to you. But be careful. You'll go to bed with some very beautiful women. Yay! And wake up with some very ugly ones. Oh. But they're still women, right? Not if it's tequila. <laughs> Stop picking your nose and start picking the ice, you bum! I'm so confused. The more I'm Jinxie, the more Jimmy loses Cookie. But if I'm Jimmy, then I can't be Jinxie. Do I do my art and lose my wife? Or do I do my wife and lose my art? Or do I do a doobie and put on some Pink Floyd? Have you ever seen anything like it, Sal? No. And I once saw a donkey show in Tijuana. Jinxie is Dixie! Hey. Go hey. back to making ace cubes, ya yeah, bum. Your work is derivative. What a debacle. And there you have it, arena ice sculpting. Wow, what were we thinking? All right, well, that's it from the Friendly Giant Arena in fugly downtown Regina. Stay tuned for Degrassi, the midlife crisis years. This seat taken? That depends. You looking to sit down next to a bum? You stop right there, mister. I don't care what anyone else thinks. You're not a bum. You're Jimmy Falcone. You know? What, you think I've never seen you in a nylon stocking before? And they're my nylons. Plus, you used your normal voice, you big dope. I knew from the beginning. I never could put anything past you, Cook. I'm sorry I neglected you and made you think I was cheating on you and lied to you and seduced you and banged you on a block of ice. I'll never do most of it again. You kidding me? That was the best sex I ever had. It was like you were my husband, but you weren't my husband. Like... Forbidden fruit. And kind of kinky. Hell yeah. I'm just glad it's all out in the open, because I couldn't take another guy getting with you, even if the other guy was me. It's all you, baby. It's all you. Uh, you mind putting the mask back on? Now that, people, is art. <laughs> 
how you doing? I'm Cookie McDougal. I used to be Cookie Falcone, wife of Mafia Big Shot Jimmy Falcone. We was living the good life back then, but I didn't know what was going on. And I didn't want to know, because I knew what was going on. Anyway, Jimmy's Uncle Cheech was giving away mob secrets, so it was only a matter of time before he was six feet under. And I've never been one to wait till the last minute. <laughs> He was such a good man. <laughs> I'm gonna miss him so much. Don't put red flowers beside red flowers. What's the matter with you? <laughs> Poor Cheech. I'll never forget his little laugh. <laughs> what are you doing? You can't put food next to a dead body. Get it out of here. <laughs> oh, Cheech, Cheech, Cheech. <laughs> Wait, get back here. Give me a crab cake. Oh, it's dry! Cook, I got noose. I know, Jimmy. It wasn't your fault. You did everything you could, but Don Gambini is an unbending man. He bent when he hit the pavement, I'll tell you that. These crab cakes are dry. Hey, who died? Holy crap! Cheech, you're alive! I'm so happy! Jimmy, you got the Don to call off the hit? Well, yes and no. Mostly no. See, I threw the Don out a window, everyone wants to whack me, so we're moving to Canada. Ah! And that's how we wound up living here in Regina... Regina. Saskatchewan. But if you think living here is gonna change us, you can go f*** yourself. Forget about it. She meant to say forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Welcome, my son. How you doing? I'm Jimmy Falcone. Jimmy Falcone? Jimmy Falcone? <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're not on the list. You're so not on the list. Maybe this'll change your mind. Jimmy, you've done terrible things in your life. Murder, assault, trying to bribe your way into heaven. Okay, try Jimmy McDougal. I don't think so. <coughs> <laughs> Are you all right? Do you need some water? We'll give you water. Sparkling or holy? <laughs> wow, that could have been terrible. What happened? You got a wiener stuck in your throat. I tried giving you mouth to mouth, but I just kept pushing it further in. So I gave you the behind lick. Cheech, I was at the gates of heaven, and they wouldn't let me in. They said I'd done terrible things with my life. Who the hell are they to judge? I don't know, Cheech. It seemed so real. Like I was actually there. Let me ask you something, Jimmy. You ever wear a jacket you haven't worn in a while, and you find a $100 bill in the pocket? I don't know, I guess. Well, that did not happen to me, but I did find Donny the Irishman's ear and a yo-yo in my pocket. Get the hell out of here. A yo-yo? Yep. Hey, an alley. I better take a leak. You never know how far to the next one. <laughs> Would like to buy some marijuana, please? All right, let's see the money. You just took our money. You calling me a thief? Let's beat the crap out of him. What's taking him so long? Cheech, come on, let's go. <coughs> Hoi! Oh! <coughs> ah! Thanks, mister! You saved our lives! What am I gonna do? Not save your lives? They got a special place in heaven for people like you. Thanks again! <sighs> Jimmy, you ever been in an alley that didn't smell? Hey, what happened here? I saved some kids from getting their asses kicked. I done something good. I done good too. I drowned a spider. Look at that. All that reefer going up in smoke. Hey, we're like those two stoners from the movies, Cheech and Jimmy. I guess we ought to tie these guys up. You got a rope? Yeah, in my Boy Scout survival bag. They let you in? They told me the cutoff was 35. I know. I used the yo-yo. Oh, man. Look at that. Another ear. And it's also a left. 
Whose jacket is this? Okay, first of all, we have to tenderize the meat. How do we do that? You try. Now what? We order a pizza and a therapist. Petey was watching MTV. I want to watch the news. I want to watch real teen grandmas. Those shows are stupid. Nuh-uh. I want to find out if Amber's going to deliver today or if she's still grounded. I stand corrected. I gotta say, it felt really good helping those drug buying frat boys. It was almost heroic. Just think how you'd feel if you'd done it on purpose. Petey, put on Teletoon. The Coyote and the Running Birds show is on. I bet this time the bird gets eaten. And last night in downtown Regina, a vigilante broke up a drug deal. A vigilante? How cool is that? Hey, that looks like a good job by some good citizen. Police claim the dealers were tied up with a yo-yo. So let's go to the man on the street, vigilante. Epic or not epic? Epic! Because a vigilante right here in Regina that's gonna bring tourists because they know they'll be safe. It's also the Cabbage Festival. So double epic! Correct! Not epic. You go to hell! Epic! He's protecting our children, keeping drugs off the street. That's epic. Keeping drugs off the street, not epic. Vigilante, epic! And he did it with a yo-yo. He's the yo-yo vigilante. I just came up with that. Now over to Brick Fitman with sports. Epic! It's not even game day, and fans have come out in droves to support the Yo-Yo Vigilante. Give me a V! V! Give me an I! I! Give me a J! J! Who wants Yo-Yo? Get your Yo-Yos. Who wants Yo-Yo? Ow, my eye! My teeth! My baby! Believe this, Cheech? The whole town's talking about us. They love us. Unbelievable. Just for beating up a bunch of bikers. I used to beat up people all the time. Nobody loved me. They called me the assailant. Or that guy. I didn't like that. They would point and say, that guy. Would it have killed them to have learned my name? I got a feeling this could be a chance for me, Cheech. I mean, maybe there's a reason I nearly choked on a weenie. Maybe I can be a real hero. What about me? Can I be, uh, what do you call it, boy toy? You mean boy wonder? I don't know. What was Robin? Boy toy. Okay, not that. How are we gonna do this, Jimmy? What if we don't see no more bad guys? Oh, we'll see them. Or better yet, they'll see us. Oh my, I am so drunk! Why would I leave my fancy mansion with so much money and expensive jewelry for someone to rob from me in my defenseless drunken state? I am far too drunk to ever fight back if someone tried to take my wads of cold, hard, untraceable cash. Why oh why would I come to a seedy bar such as this? It's like I'm asking for it. It's as if I'm saying, please, rob me. Take heed, stranger. We don't want nobody to taking advantage of your defenselessness condition. They might steal all that fine jewelry so loosely hanging from your neck. I think I will go outside to the alley, kind sir. I feel the need to throw up from the large amounts of alcohol that I have consumed. Barf! Barf! Hey, rich guy. You've been yo-yoed, punk. <gasps> Sounds like trouble. Let's roll. Hey, Jimmy. We're like that cop team, Starsky and Cheech. you that this is not acceptable behavior by any citizen of Regina. 
We are the Mounties, and we will catch this! Yo-Yo Vigilante. He will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Why do you want to prosecute him? He's doing your job better than you. Because the law clearly states... Why can't the Mounties arrest these crooks before the vigilante? Well, I don't think the yo-yo... Yo, yo, what do you got against the yo-yo? Is there a drug problem in Regina? Why have yo-yos been banned from schools? How often do you mount your horse? Finally, Regina has something Saskatoon doesn't. We have the only vigilante hero in the great province of Saskatchewan. What do you think, Jimmy? Epic or not epic? I bet he's just a regular guy who puts on his pants one sleeve at a time. I wish I was more like him. Prowling the streets at night, making my own rules, getting kisses from women I'm not related to. So you like this guy, huh? You think he's gonna get into heaven? He's already in heaven, Jimmy. This is Regina. No, Toby. This is heaven's nutsack. But it deserves to be safe. <laughs> I heard he's 19, 6'4", blonde hair, and has his own car. A lady at the market told the cashier that her cousin saw him, and he's actually 38, gives foot massages, and cries when it rains. No, he's 19, and he's perfect for me. No, he's 38, cares how your day was, and never misses the ball. Now go to your room. Hey, what are you all talking about? What everybody in town is talking about. The yo-yo vigilante. I so want to make out with him. You put that thought out of your mind right now, little lady. That's sick. I mean, the man's a criminal. That's where I'm torn on this whole deal. On the one hand, he's busting crooks, which makes him a gavone. On the other hand, he's breaking the law, which I respect. I would just like to meet him for one night. He said stop saying that. Mwah. You're daddy's little girl. To the yoke cave. I know you're the yo-yo vigilante. Petey, I admit to being a yo-yo dieter. I just can't shake those last 80 pounds. But a vigilante, that's crazy talk. Oh, is it? All right, you caught us. But it just sort of happened. We didn't plan it. We were a little drunk. It was an accident, but your mother and I still love you. Oh, wait, wrong speech. All right, how'd you know? Every sound in this house travels through those vents and into my room. Yeah? Well, if you think you heard Gloria from a car wash in here the other night, you did not. So you admit you're a vigilante. You rat us out, and I'll come at you with the full force of a 68-year-old man. Rat you out? Oh, contraire. I want to be the Q to your James Bond, the Morgan Freeman to your Batman, the Elton to your John. I want you to use my crime-fighting stuff. Check this one out. It's a modified stud finder that identifies the guilty and the criminally insane. Hey, it works. This is my masterpiece, laser farting gum. It's perfect if you're being chased. Try one. What does it do? Give me your fink. I like it. Plus, there'll never be any doubt who dealt it. The Mountie wants to see us right away. Hang on, I haven't shown you my best one. The Holographic Lady. How does that fight crime? Who cares? I'm sorry to drag you out at this time of night, but it's about the yo-yo vigilante. I think I read something about that. Some handsome hero running around town, stopping bad guys and thumbing his nose at you feds. He's no hero. It's against the law to take the law into your own hands, and I aim to stop him. Go stop him. What's it got to do with us? I need your experience. As you may know, the legendary Take Me Diamond is on display at the Regina Museum of Stuff, and I want you to steal it. Now you're talking my language. Not really steal it, of course. I want you to break into the museum and attempt to steal it. When the vigilante arrives to stop you, I will swoop in and arrest him. You see, gentlemen, sometimes it takes a criminal to catch a criminal. Oh, man, you had to go and gay it up. What's in it for us, McCool? A chance to feel good about doing the right thing, Jimmy. Something I believe you really, really want. You can't tell me what I want, what I really, really want. All right, but you owe us. See you there at midnight. Midnight it is. For Canada! And getting antiquated lyrics stuck in your head! Come find me, my hero. What the? What are you doing, young lady? Mom! You 
don't get in the house. That's so unfair. I hate you. And get me some batteries. There's some in my nightstand next to my... Never mind, I'll get it. All right, I'll be right over there. When I give the signal, you move in on the diamond. That's when the vigilante will surely make his move. I hope we catch those guys, Jimmy. How are we going to catch those guys? We are those guys! Right. Well, if I catch you, I'm going to let you go. You're my nephew, for Christ's sake. No one's catching anybody. It's really simple. All we got to do is sit here until morning, because nobody's showing up. Hey, look. It's Gina. Shut up. McCool can't know Gina busted in. McCool, look. There's a hot girl in a bikini down the hall. She's getting away. My goodness. The vigilante is a woman. Of course. That's why we couldn't find her. We were only looking for a man. How sexist of us. How un-Canadian. How despicable. And look at that ass. Madam, you're under arrest. Gina, what the hell are you doing? What's it look like I'm doing? I'm taking that diamond. What the hell are you doing here? What are you going to do with a giant diamond? I'm going to fence it. Duh. No, I'm going to wind up fencing it for you, because you don't know any fences. It'll be just like the time you got the hamster, and I wound up feeding it, cleaning its cage, walking it. Then when you didn't want it anymore, I'm the one who had to drive it out to a farm in the country. But, Pop... Get home. But... Now! Man, when I grow up, I'm going to let my children steal whatever they want. She's going to make a damn fine mom someday. Oh, no, McCool's coming back. Okay, quick. What happened? The vigilantes got us. Where were you? We could have been hurt. Yeah, ow. It's the damnedest thing. The bikini lady just disappeared. Then I got a call from my captain saying they've captured the vigilante. What? It was your boss from the tourism bureau. He confessed. A Toby something. I did it! It was me! I'm the vigilante! <coughs> and visit Regina. What the hell is that idiot kid doing? I don't know. Me neither. Whoa, sweet. For once, I'm not the dumber guy. This is bad, Cheech. How could they have arrested Toby? Not only is he not the yo-yo vigilante, he's the nicest guy in the world. That kind of hurts my feelings, Jimmy. It's like the whole world has gone topsy-curvy. I try to do good so that I can redeem myself, and a nice guy goes to jail because of it. They'll eat that kid alive in there. Cheech, our next act of vigilantism is busting Toby out of prison. It's so exciting to be bad again. Or good. Whichever this is. So, a new plan unfolds. Oh, for the love of it. Go outside, you little freak. Give me your wallet. All right, all right, here. Scream for help or I'll shoot. Help! Here, go home, you're useless. Teresa, what the hell are you doing? Nothing. Just meeting guys. You're trying to meet the vigilante. I told you, he's too old for you. Teresa Maria Falcone, is that a gun? It's just a water pistol. See? Son of a bitch! It's a real gun! No wonder it kept leaking. Give me that thing. You get in the house. You're grounded. God, that's like so unfair. Shake it off, Cookie. Shake it off. It's just a gunshot wound. You've had worse. Help! Help! I've been shot! I need a vigilante! Nothing. What do we do now? Now, we chew. Lock and load. There's a ton of guys in here. How are we gonna find ours? The modified stud muffin finder. You want to buy some memorabilia? I got OJ jerseys. I got bubblegum cards. Gloves. They're hard to get on, but they come off easy. How about a knife? Where'd I put that thing? Damn, I can never find that knife. Did you know he was a football player before he was a criminal? Hey, come here. Come on, come closer. Let me put this gun in your mouth, and I'll write you a song. Come on. 
Just for fun. I've been drinking. What could go wrong? Jimmy, don't look. But I think that guy's wearing a wig. We'll never find Toby with this thing. Everyone in here is a criminal, except the guy we're looking for. Then we reverse the polarities. Star Trek? The View. Hey, you're the two fellows who got me put in here. I didn't do anything. I was just jogging with my metrosexual man bag. You think I haven't used that one? I invented I didn't do it. His story checks out. And all I was trying to do was give you back your stupid monocle. Here! His story, too. Yeah, and I'm in here for trying to save a dog from Michael Vick's car. I don't get it. Everyone I put away was innocent. I finally try to do some good, and it all goes bad. And why am I in my underwear? Jimmy, look! It's the Fishman of Alcatraz. Swim! Swim like the wind! We gotta find all the people we arrested and set them free! Not me, Jimmy! <laughs> I'm already free! This is where I belong! These are my people! And now I beat you alive! And then, Toby eats us. Man, can you imagine if that happened? Jimmy, you are so high. <laughs> Shut up! Don't make me laugh! <laughs> Stop! So what do you think? Should we tie these guys up? Are you out of your mind? Then the whole story could come true. We gotta get out of here before we do something good by mistake. What about heaven? Some people are put on this earth to do good, Cheech. Let's get out of here before any of them come and arrest us. That sure was a crazy story, Jimmy. But let me tell you something. I am the demon golf lock. Knock it off already. La 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 Saskatchewan, la 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 la